back. My name is Kit. I'm Phil. And I'm Steve. And this is Streaming Things, a TV and film podcast. But right now, as you know, what we've been doing is a Star Wars marathon. Now this is podcasting. That's right, baby. It's been a wizard, guys. We've finally made it. To the good movies, guys. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> We're at the prequels. Phantom Menace is today. Email the show at streamingthingspod at gmail.com. You can support the show financially at patreon.com slash streaming things. We've got a March poll up. Movies that have premiered at South by Southwest is what you're picking between. Mm-hmm. Because obviously... Uh, we got back from South by Southwest, and that was on our minds when we made the poll. <laughs> That's you know the, the secret. That's yeah. the sauce. <clears throat> yep. uh, is it secret? Is, is it safe? safe? It is. It is very safe for you to go on Patreon and vote right now, because there is, there is a quick turnaround on this poll, so be sure to do it. If you haven't already and you can vote, go vote. Yeah, A Quiet Place took a fucking stout lead. I don't know if you saw. Yeah, what are the other contenders for people <clears throat> who might be curious and were like, oh, I want to join the Patreon and get on this poll? Uh, Evil Dead from 2013. Apparently our patrons are all squeamish cowards because that was an immediate no for most of them. <laughs> the movie's a masterpiece. Not as much of an uh, immediate no as Attack the Block was. Uh, yeah, well, I don't think they know how cool it is. That movie's dope. Uh, and then there's uh, Baby Driver. Baby Driver. Which is about, <clears throat> it's different than Boss Baby. It's when he gets his driver's license. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a prequel before he got the job. Yeah. You yeah. know? You got to start somewhere. That's true. You start at the bottom and then you get there. Mm-hmm. We started at the bottom and, and now, now we're here. here right? mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. At the true. bottom. Yeah. <laughs> slightly, <laughs> slightly, slightly more than the yeah. bottom. <laughs> kind of like a, like a downward facing dog yoga pose from the bottom. Right. Right. That's where we're at now. <laughs> ass up. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And, <laughs> how do you want to die, Phil? Face down or ass up? Mm. <laughs> That's what I want to know. But we're talking about a Phantom Menace today and how we do that, how we do that. Uh, we're going to have a Star Wars themed Mad Lib to sandwich this beautiful content. Mm, we're going to talk about our overall thoughts on this film, what it was like watching it this time in our previous history with the movie. And then we'll do a scene by scene, play by play recap. Then we'll cap it off with a few fun categories. The medal ceremony, what this movie does that none of the other movies in the amongst the 11 Star Wars films that we're going to talk about do uh, what it does the best. Uh, and then uh, we're, we're going to rank them streaming things style, which means that not just our individual rankings, but as we watch these movies, we're going to have to agree on an overall master ranking. And I think this is the week that things start to get interesting, maybe. I think probably so. But sometimes you guys surprise me. Sometimes we're simpatico. So far, we've been really in sync with each other. Anywho, so <clears throat> let's do this, fellas. Uh, do we start with the Mad Lib? I think we do. We do start with the Mad Lib. We're a little out of practice. It's been like uh, almost two weeks since we got together last. We weren't even home. We weren't even in this state. Yeah, we were in uh, the state of Texas. I was going to say Texas. Tejas. Mm. (laughs) Uh, But this is the point of the show where we do the Mad Libs. So I'm going to ask these two jabronis for a series of words so I can put the pen to the paper and craft a story thanks to the Star Wars themed Mad Libs today. Are you boys ready? We are ready for Phil is first this week. Phil is first this week. Phil, that means you owe me a noun. Battle droid. Kit, adjective. Thirstily. Wait, Thirsty. that's an adverb. Thirsty. Thirsty. <laughs> Verb ending in ing. Blasting. <laughs> adjective. Mittens. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Mittenly. <laughs> you go to Texas and you forget all grammar. <laughs> Harry. Harry. What? You really wanted this next one, throw them out. Mittens. Okay, mittens it is. (laughs) Kit, I need a part of the body, plural. No, mittens has been stolen. (laughs) (laughs) That's Cisco. Let's get it out of the way, Steve. Balls. All right. Brave of you. (laughs) Brave of you to rip off that band aid. (laughs) Phil, give me an adjective. Furry. I need a verb ending in ing, kit. Digging. Adjective. Gungany. Gungan E. With a Y. Yeah. Gun- <laughs> Thank you. Actually, that's what I went with. Good. Nice. We're on the same page. Yeah, man. Maybe Gungan esque. No, <laughs> fuck you. Misa <laughs> simpatico. <laughs> Misa Gungany. Kit, give me a verb. Toss. Adjective. Red. Adjective. Annoying. Plural noun. Shield generators. Adjective is the last one. Make it a good one. Moist. 
That is the word collecting segment for our Mad Lib. Stay tuned to the end of the episode to discover what story these two have con- have con- uh, have crafted mm. with the words they have given me. Concocted? Is that what you were looking for? I was going to like concrafted. Mm. Ooh, I like that. He was afraid to say cock. Concrafted. I'm never afraid to say cock. He doesn't even watch Peacock. Sometimes. Like, so oh. you know how Steve said that he doesn't like to uh, receive calls. Mm-hmm. Sometimes he calls me and just says cock and hangs up. It's really weird. <laughs> yeah, but if you called me, I would hate it. No, yeah, yeah. He wouldn't <laughs> he was answer. Like, just text me cock. I don't want to- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please. I know what you're doing. <laughs> Send me dick texts. <laughs> dick texts, not yeah. dick dick pics. No, I just don't want dick pics. I just want texts that say <laughs> dick or cock. Okay, all right. <laughs> He's really into erotica, so he doesn't like the photos. Yeah. Just say it. Yeah. Right. Hey, why would I? Why would have a photo color what I perceive when I can just Ooh, do it up here point. in my yeah, mind? That's true. The balls are always big in yeah. my mind. <laughs> that's true. Well, the Phantom Menace boys <laughs> paint me a picture. It's 1999, Phil. You're a huge Star Wars nerd. 13 years old. Very little friends, I'm assuming. Hey, easy, <laughs> easy, easy, easy. <laughs> but yes. You've recently rewatched all of the special editions and, adi- you know, added features to the, the original trilogy. Mm-hmm. You're on a high. Yeah. You've never been happier. Yeah. This movie's coming out. Highly anticipated. What did you think? What was it like? I mean, I was 13. I... It was the perfect age for this movie when it came out. And uh, I mean, I didn't like Jar Jar Binks, of course, because no one did. But I still enjoyed it a lot. So when I watched it uh, on the big screen for the first time with my dad, I had a great I had a great time. I <clears throat> And I, I think deep down, I didn't really get that it was a bad movie, quote unquote, until later on when I watched it again at an at a later age and, and, uh, and I understood like why there were so many problems with this movie. But when I saw it at 13 on the big screen, it was great. I had a great time. So. All right. What was it like watching it last night? <clears throat> I hadn't seen it in probably 10 years. Cause it's not one that I return to often. Cause it's this episode isn't the, one. <laughs> this isn't in the queue. No, 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 no. But there how are you going to start the Skywalker saga? Yeah. Right. Um, but I did watch it at like 11 PM last night. Um, and I was like, Ugh, I don't want to watch episode one. And I thought about doing <laughs> the, like the, like one and a half speed that I did for return turn of the Jedi. You that monster. I did last time. But I didn't. Cause I was like, you know what? It's been like 10 years. You said bomb bad. Yeah. I hadn't, let's just watch it. And I did, and I honestly got to say, and this is probably a hot take, I really <laughs> enjoyed it this time. And I think it's just because it felt weirdly new to me because it had been so long since I had seen it. And <clears throat> it's also, I think this is the last Star Wars film to be shot on film, like actual film. Yeah. And I think it looks good. Like, And I know that's a hot, hot take, but knowing what episode two looks like compared to episode one. I really truly like the like filmic look of episode one more than episode two. And I miss that. I miss star Wars looking old and episode one to me looked old. It's a 25 year old movie now. Mm, So it is an old movie. I'm going to go walk off a bridge. (laughs) So, and I, I think um, I've been like kind of getting more into early, 2000s, late 90s TV recently, and it has a really good look. And I think it's just watching a lot of uh, road rules. I'm watching Farscape <laughs> right now, which is incredible. Is I don't know Fiverr? if you have. I've you seen Farscape. I haven't watched all of Farscape now. It's incredible. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the, but I think episode one surprised me with how much I liked. It. Of course, it's bad in a lot of ways, but. There are things about episode one that I like more than either ep- than either episode two or three. And we'll get into that as 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 we talk. But there is one specific thing that I love about episode one more than the other two prequel films. Um, and like respect where it's due. Like, I think it's a bad movie, of course, but there are redeeming things in this movie that I like a lot. And I had I had a good time. So that's all we ask. Yeah. We're not, we're not here for a long time. We're here for a good time. (laughs) Steve, what about you, buddy? 
Well, I am going to, you know, be bold. I'm going to be brave. Mighty okay. forces will come to your aid. I will, yes. Thank you. Bring them all. Come, <laughs> come to me, all forces, all in sundry, because I'm going to do something very brave here. And I'm going to admit, I fucking hate this movie. Uh, <laughs> This is this is my least favorite Star Wars movie by like a mile, like which I, I might which might be a stretch for some people because some people will always be like, what about Attack of the Clones? Uh, spoiler alert. I hate that movie, too. <laughs> um, but this movie has is just um, I was thinking about it. So I started watching the movie a couple days ago with Erica because she's you know, she's I think seen most of the movies at least once, but she doesn't remember any of them. And she wanted to like watch them with me. And. As we're watching the movie, as it keeps progressing, I'm looking at her because I know how I think the movie is. So I'm looking to her to see, like, how is she taking this in? And the whole time she's just like her eyes are getting bigger and she's just kind of like doing like kind of leaning her head forward. And she would look at me like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you making me watch this? Because this is just a bad movie. Um, it has a weird flow to it, especially in the beginning, like two thirds of it, I would say like, it's not even oh, until yeah. the, the pod racing scene. I feel like this movie has like just weird pacing <laughs> scenes that don't make sense that are just inserted randomly that have no bearing on the plot whatsoever. Most of them have to do with Jar 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 Binks, <sighs> who I won't, you know, that, that poor character in Ahmed Bess has gone through so much over the years. I'm not <laughs> going to flog it much more than to say like, it's just an annoying character and serves no purpose. And, um, I'm glad that they kind of <laughs> ease back on the Jar Jar pedal in the, in the subsequent prequel films. But to Phil's point, I think this is the most hideous Star Wars movie ever. It, I think it's very ugly because, really? because it's this blend of film and really bad CGI yeah. that come together. It just looks horrible. At least attack the clones is just weird CGI all the way out. So it has a consistent look, whereas this is just such a mishmash of, looks it just it, and and whatever film they're using or the color grading they're using everything looks flat and dull and not saturated in a way that i feel like it should like when they're walking through naboo like the force of naboo like it just there's just a flatness to everything and it just to me it's just dark and gross and grainy and it just doesn't look nearly as pretty as the film from the original movies do uh i just think it's just a flat ugly film with bad cgi and I can't fault the CGI because it's 1999. You know, they're doing the best they can. I remember being a kid when this first came out in 1999. I was um, 11, I think. 11 or 12 when this came out. And Math. I, I think technically I was 11 turning 12. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember like thinking, wow, Star Wars, I love it. You know, you get the ships, pod racing. We can all agree. It's fucking wizard. Yeah. Darth Maul is the best. The score is amazing yeah and so i had like i collected all the toys i i loved everything about it but like it did not last long i remember by the time attack of the clones came out i was already shitting on phantom menace like i specifically remember when i saw attack of the clones i went back home and a, a childhood neighbor friend of mine was like oh how was it I'm like dude it's so much better than phantom menace <laughs> yeah, even though it's really not yeah uh, <laughs> but um and also i don't know what version of this movie you guys watched i just gotta say it now uh, the, the version on Disney, uh, plus is the Blu-ray version and the Blu-ray version when it came out, that's when they instituted CGI Yoda into the Phantom Menace, Oh, which yeah. was something they started in attack of the clones. Right. And I think it's the only case where I would say the CGI is better than the puppet. I will, this is the yeah. only time I'll ever say that because yeah. the puppet they got for Yoda in the original cut for Phantom Menace. That's the one I watched. Is the stuff made of nightmares. Yeah, it's bad. And I don't know why they thought they could get away with that. When <laughs> <laughs> it's really bad. I don't know how they made this puppet look so lifelike and amazing in the 80s. And then 16 years later, they they go to, they, they produce that. Like, like someone After had to be Mardi Gras, this shoot was. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. How did they do that lots so of, poor? Lots of beans I got last night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, long story short, I just, uh, this, I do not like this movie. Um, and we'll make, I'll make fun of a lot of stuff going through it. I love the memes. I will, I will say this, the prequels, before we shit all, before I shit on the prequels for the next couple episodes, yeah. I will say the prequels are incredible when it comes to world building. Yes. And lore. Yep. 
Um, they do a really great job of just introducing all, like, here's a Senate, here's Coruscant, here's Naboo. This is this weird democracy that elects 12 year olds as their queen. <laughs> and <laughs> here's pod racing and the, like, the, the credits are good. Slaves are on Tatooine. Like it does all this in like, the Jedi order, for instance, like it's something we had never seen up to this point. Yeah. So it does this great job of just completely opening up the world of star Wars. I just wish they had a competent director because yeah. George Lucas is possibly the worst actor's director of all time. <laughs> as we will see this movie filled with incredible actors who are Oscar winners. There are several Oscar winners and nominees in this film. All of them. I feel like George Lucas took a side like, come here, come here, come here. Natalie Portman, come here. Oh God. What you're doing is you're what I like to call acting, but I want your inspiration. Think of wood. Be wood. <laughs> yeah. Be yep. wood. Liam Neeson, be wood. Yeah. You and McGregor, you're so funny. I love it. Be wood. Mm. Jake Lloyd, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm at best. You're fucking killing it. Go yeah, out there and charge yeah. her it up. Get yeah. it? Because they were already terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor, I, poor Jake Lloyd. I will make fun of Jake. Jake Lloyd and no. the Medbest, if you don't know, have uh, both received a lot of pondered hate. suicide and had yeah. a horrible time ever since being in this movie. So. Well, that's the thing is, Ahmed Best, <clears throat> as much as I hate the Jar Jar character, he's fucking killing it as somebody who's like, hey, this is what you're doing. Yeah. Go do that. He's he not understood the, the assignment. Park. He understood the fucking assignment. It's the direction that was bad. Yeah. The writing and the direction was bad. Yeah. But he did the best that he could with what he was given. It's not yeah. his fault. And Jake Lloyd's a fucking kid. I know. He's a little kid. He's what, nine? When, yeah. this, when he's making this. Yeah. And, and also, like, Osmond, Jake but... Lloyd's not the worst actor in these movies. That's the thing. Like, there are <laughs> older people than him acting worse than him. If you, so he can't be blamed. If you look at what George Lucas, like Steve said, managed to do to one of the greatest actors of our generation. And then imagine, oh, okay, he probably is good. It was just, this is the dialogue yes. and the direction that he was yeah. given. Because, yeah. I mean, Natalie Portman is objectively... Amazing. Can act. Yes. And look at this movie. Mm -hmm. you know and I mean? like she had been in like big films before this and yeah. acted better in those films. I so will like, tell you, I will tell her that you stopped by. <sighs> God, it's so bad. <laughs> we yeah, should yeah, use our rough. ascension guns, which yes, we have. Those are things we have. Just like completely checked out thousand yard stare. Mm -hmm. Just, I don't know what. I've taken I'm, four why did, why Nubian the quaaludes. Take? <laughs> <laughs> like I can see I, I don't agree with it but I can see like the the case could be made from George Lucas end of like oh Jedi Knights they should be they, they've given they've given up emotion and yeah. personal entanglements they should be a little more like Vulcans in that way more like Vulcans like yeah. I can see that but I don't know why he's like I'm gonna take that and just expand it to literally every goddamn character I that know. is a human being because he doesn't the droids can have personality Jar Jar Binks can have personality sub fucking sub Bulba can have personality but if you're a human being yeah. You're a robot. Yeah. Uh, you you have less personality it's than actually the actually the droids. robots have more. Like R2D2 has more expression in his beep boops. Yeah. than Natalie Portman is allowed to have. Yeah, and it's it, it's maddening. I uh I hear you. Yeah. I see you. This movie I feel like gaslights me. I feel very <laughs> I feel very <laughs> in like a, there I have a toxic relationship with this movie cuz I loved it as a kid. I yeah. loved it. I had all the toys. Darth yeah. Maul. Sure. Uh, Jedi power battles. Oh, Jedi, power battles. Jedi power so battles good. is I fucking amazing. I yeah. fucked with it so heavy. Uh, the, Phantom, the Phantom Menace game, too. Also amazing. Was a really yeah. good, good game. All that stuff. And I tried to watch it last night with the lens of having just finished the original trilogy and putting myself in the headspace of a diehard fan. And this is what I get after waiting. I tried to be in that headspace. Mm -hmm. Like when the... Uh, when the movie opens with with the whole sequence with Qui Gon and uh, Obi Wan, honestly, this is amazing. It's the first time we've been able to see Jedi do Jedi, Jedi things like this. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. It's only hinted at like these abil the, these abilities and skills that they have. Um, and so it was interesting to watch from that perspective. Like you said, the score is absolutely incredible. It's amazing. This might be the best score in the entire franchise and a franchise yeah. littered with incredible scores. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I honestly think that that would be, spoiler alert, would be my medal. Really mm -hmm. standout tracks. It's 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 really? so good. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't think it's, I, I kind of put aside like 
what ILM was doing because it doesn't look great at times, but at the same time, this is 1999. This yeah, is just a few years after Jurassic Park, you know, was the first. Yeah. And he's doing this. He's like, I want to use that. And I'm, I'm going to build a whole and world. He went back and redid his, his, <clears throat> his, his older movies and released those in 97. So like yeah. he had done CGI stuff prior to this. It movie looks like slightly like better Star than Wars. the special editions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember being in 1999 when the Oscars came out because this was nominated for best special effects. <laughs> it didn't win. But it was it was up against the Matrix, which, of course, the Matrix is going to win. But I remember being a little 11 year old or whatever, however old I was in 1999. Like, how did that movie win? They created <laughs> a fully CGI person in Jar Jar Beats. See, my weird ass 11 year old ass was a bigger fan of the Matrix. You know what I mean? Like, that's my childhood. <laughs> do you think, do you honestly think that if Jar Jar wasn't so bad, if he was an actual good um, addition to this movie, being a fully CGI presence, you think that it would have won? No, just because the Matrix is such a okay groundbreaking special. Yeah, you think about that liquid film. metal like flowing into Neo's mouth, sure, and uh, all the cool shit that yeah, goes like on the, in there. The, it's the just camera, like, yeah. It's I mean, just like the, the action choreography of, from the Matrix was mimicked for fifteen years. No, you know? for sure, yeah. No, like I'm, I'm not trying to say that the Matrix isn't deserving. You fucking better not. I'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> that a fully CGI. I honestly don't think Jar Jar is that bad. Here, hear me out for a second. Whoa. I think Jar Jar is overutilized. There's yes. a point, oh, especially sure. at yeah. the climax, when he's like tripping failing and failing upward the whole time. <laughs> why not have an arc for that character where he actually takes it seriously and you put some tension in that scene and instead of using him as comedic relief, he actually steps up to the plate as a, a general, mm -hmm. which is ridiculous. But yeah. he, he does that. And yeah. that, how much better is that? Where he's actually like, 100%. we see Gungans dying and he's like, this isn't a fucking joke. Right. You know what I mean? And we get like an arc in that character. You would have never hated Jar Jar Binks because all of that up to that point, all the dumb humor, even like the uh, <clears throat> putting his mouth in the uh, what's it called? The energy, bind, the energy binder, energy, energy binder. That's it's no different. Star Wars is always fucking goofy. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> we'll get I have a really funny take about that. Scene. Like, it's like C-3PO <laughs> is a fucking dumbass. Yeah. He's always bumbling around saying inane shit. Yeah. And for some reason, he, he thought it would make <clears throat> sense in this vast universe for yeah. Anakin to be the one that had built him. Uh, it's ridiculous, but it's fine. Like, I get it. Like, it's a member this. Mm -hmm. Um like there's always been really goofy shit in Star Wars yeah, right? and people just kind of latched onto Jar Jar. And I think in an unfair way versus all the things that are silly as shit in the original trilogy. <clears throat> but that's the problem is that it doesn't stop. It's 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 overutilized. And if you've yeah. given him an arc because that's the part that bothers me when he's like swinging on the tanks and the battle and stuff. I'm like, I am trying so hard amidst all this wooden dialogue to care about these people. And you're doing everything you can, meaning George, to make me not. Right. To make me not think any of this should be taken seriously. Right. And yeah. I know this is like a, a kid's movie or whatever, but like there's tons of kids movies where I weep like a baby because there's emotion there. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. right. Like turning red destroys me. That's objectively a kid's movie. Kids right. movies don't have to be bad. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, 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 not at all. Um, but also there's some high highs to this movie. Like the, yeah. the duel of the fates, the pod racing sequence, yes. the production design, Amadala slays the, the outfits. I'm in. Yeah. I like that shit. Literally everything about this movie when it comes to world building, <clears throat> like the production design, the creature design, costumes. Is Palpatine from Naboo? Yes. Yes. So he's a Naboo person. Correct. Yes. <laughs> okay. He's, he's a Nubian. A, 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 a Nubian. A Nubian. <laughs> Nubian. <laughs> You can't use that word, George, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. It was like really weird that they chose that. Like, yeah, don't, like, don't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like it. Um, by the way, there's uh, a couple things. We probably yeah. will do Jar Jar's accent because we can't help ourselves, but yeah. I, I don't think we should. Uh, I'm not going to. But the, the well, Viceroy's accent is. Uh, the Nemoidian accent? Yeah. That. Uh, problematic. We, yeah. It's very problematic because that actor I've been informed is a, a white guy, I think. I'm pretty sure he is. Yeah. Let me just verify that. Why would they go with that? Hmm. So we're going to, there are so many choices in this movie. Definitely not. Let's. You know, you guys know we love accents, but wow. No, this is, uh, yeah, the, um, this movie has a lot of stereotypes in it. You yeah. know, you look at Jar Jar, you look at the Gungans, you look at the Nemodians, you look at fucking Watto. 
Uh, it's all just stereotypes out the ass coming out. <laughs> and so it's a little problematic. Yes. Mm. A little, I say it's very problematic, yeah. but I was actually watching it with uh, Erica last night and I was telling her, so full cards on the table, everybody, <laughs> the Neboidian accent. I love Neboidian so much. Like there, I think those characters have such like, zest to them and they're silly and they're problematic for sure but i think they're, they're also practical they're like, practical like they, yeah, they are cool. you can tell they're a neat species of alien that look neat uh so growing up i would mimic them constantly like it was one of my favorite things like they i know all of their voice their lines of dialogue in my head so well and i was telling erica like i'm gonna have a real hard time not slipping into that not stealing off the bridge not stealing off a bridge with yeah. phil it's gonna be really yeah. hard for me and as we're, she, she goes, you know what they kind of sound like? And I'm like, a stereotype? And she goes, well, yeah. But uh, she's like, you know that skit from SNL with Pedro Pascal? He's like, oh my God, that's the hottest guy I've ever seen. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, like thank you for doing that. The Nemordians are from LA. So if I quote the Nemordians, it'll be the Pedro Pascal LA accent. <laughs> All right. it's, that's Good. the bridge that we found. Oh my God. You still like the off top bridge. Where am I? <laughs> Try to <come. laughs> I, um, yeah. So I, I think we're going to have an argument on our hands when we get to the ranking, I think. Because I think there is a enough here i don't think between us oh we might we may be on the same page Chris. <laughs> oh, i think toast. it's a matter of getting steve <laughs> on board so all right that's how democracy works baby i love democracy so wait wait, wait. <laughs> can i can i just um go back to a point you made about the look of the show absolutely the, the show the movie um it's interesting that you are so um, opposed to the way it looks because I don't disagree with anything that you said about it looking flat at all. Like, I think you're spot on with that. But I also think for some reason that flatness to me looks so specific to the Star Wars world at this point that it works for me. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting that you feel the complete opposite of that. The other thing I think um, may contribute to this is when episode one came out, I don't feel like people really like remember this, but the merchandising and the marketing for this movie insane. was insane. Absolutely insane. Insane. And I wonder if some of that look is just being constantly bombarded with all of the marketing, all the vending machines, all the toys, all the candy, all the action figures, all the Star Wars uh, paper towel rolls or whatever. Like Ooh, everything, every a, single thing quilted was- Quilted Northern? <laughs> every <laughs> single like household product, I feel like had a episode one version to promote this movie. Yeah. And I wonder if that look is um, sort of like- soiled because it was just so in our faces for so long during the during the marketing blitz of this movie i i don't know if, if the marketing blitz has anything to do like it, to me like this movie like stands out when you look at all the star wars movies if you put them all in a line this is the one that sticks out the most like a sore thumb because the original trilogy have a look to them <clears throat> this trilogy this movie definitely sticks out when you compare it to episodes two and three episodes two and three have a very specific look mm. And then when you look at modern Star Wars, they also have a look that sort of blends episode two and three with the original movies mm -hmm. into one look. Yeah. Like they do a really good job of blending those two together. So for me, it just like this movie just sticks out like a sore thumb in terms of like how everything looks. Sure. But it's interesting that you bring up the marketing because you're right. Like it was absolutely bananas. Yeah. Do you guys remember the, uh, <gasps> the Taco Bell KFC? There's one other restaurant that did the thing where like you can collect like tokens from like different planets. And if you, it was basically like the McDonald's Mar uh, Monopoly game yeah. where you're collecting, I think you're collecting like these like tokens that you get from drinks. And there was like the, the little character drink toppers. I remember the, the, the I remember the drink top toppers. Yes. I don't remember the tokens though. There was, there was some sort of like game that you are, you're trying to collect and you can win stuff. But then, but you specifically, you mentioned the, uh, the, the vending machine. You went yeah. to the, the last remaining I did. I went to Pittsburgh. Phantom Menace <laughs> vending machine in the U.S. In Pittsburgh, if you ride the uh, Monongahela incline up to where that ends up, up on the hill, uh, I think it's called like the, uh, I don't know. Um, but there's a fire station up there and there's a, there's an episode one vending machine up there. 
Just Did like you go on up the there street. because you knew it was up there? It's yes. like word on the street. I made my wife go up there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes, yeah, so I go see Yowdy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, we're doing what now? I was like, there's a vending machine on the street. I have to go see it. She was, she was like, whatever. <laughs> Can we just get a beer after Can this? Can we please like, yeah, go fine. see the vending machine and yeah. also still have sex? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. So I made her take, take a picture of me next to it. Uh, it was great. <laughs> we'll put it in the chat. We'll yeah. put it in the chat. Do you remember <laughs> <laughs> one more quick, quick thing? Uh, do you remember the Jar Jar Binks sucker? Oh my God. Yes. Do you? Do you oh, I got to pull it up in case. Yeah. I think I've seen this go viral since then about it what was, a bad idea it was. It was this like clamshell design where um, you pushed Jar Jar's candy tongue Mm -hmm. up through his mouth and he like splits apart and you could like suck on the Jar Jar mouth. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so you're literally <laughs> sucking on Jar Jar's tongue and it looks like you're like making out with Jar Jar. Can you imagine <laughs> giving a child that and like not looking at that? Like this is wrong. <laughs> not a good idea. Oh, I fucking love that. How much are those on eBay? You think? <laughs> oh man. I, I want one. Yeah. I'll need three. <laughs> but um, no, it, when it comes to Phantom Menace, I don't like this movie, but I do love everything that else that came out as a result of the movie, like the games, the comic books, the expanded stories, all that shit I fucking <clears throat> love. It's just yeah. the movie itself, I think, is poorly executed. Fair. Yeah, the fact that he ma managed to almost suck all of the charisma out of Ewan McGregor. And Fascinating. Yeah, it's like needs to be studied. I think, honestly, I think Liam, you said something about Liam Neeson. I think Qui-Gon's pretty good in this. I think he's, like, the best character by far. Well, he's the one that, like, when I was kind of yeah. talking about how, like, the Jedi should be removed from f feelings. Yeah, like, like, he displays that the best. The fact word. that he's, like, calm under duress is actually yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but, like, I think like, that... It's good. shit. Ha it it bees like this, guys. Yeah. <laughs> the living force, <laughs> <laughs> but like it works for him because he he does a good job of like like it's not that he doesn't show set of emotion. Like he does show emotion. It's just subdued yeah. and very like in line with like the Jedi way. And it like you said, it works. And, and but unfortunately, trying that for every other first person in the movie, it does not work. So. Yeah, like Panaka and like <clears throat> that crew. You guys should be more. Animated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But all that is to say, uh, I, I have an adult's understanding of this plot now, and I want to try to mm -hmm. lay that on you guys and see what I missed and what's like in advance of the recap, because I, I'm actually curious for the first time last night, I, I was trying to analyze like, what was the intention here? Like, what is Sidious's motivation? And I think it actually makes sense in a way, because in the opening scenes, the Jedi show up, right? The Federation is aghast, like, and I think it might just be fan service. Like, oh, we couldn't possibly contend with a Jedi, right? And and Sidious uh, appears to be shocked by that. Like, oh, they're Jedi? But it's like, this is the height of the Republic. In no universe would the Jedi not have gotten involved in this. Right. This is literally what they do. So is everybody, f is this poor writing here? But my, th hold on. My theory is Sidious intended for all of this to happen. Well, yeah. The Trade Federation are just not my theory, but my understanding is the, the Trade Federation are just pawns. Mm -hmm. He knew they were going to get fucked. He knew the Jedi were going to show up. Mm -hmm. He knew that uh, they and Amidala were going to get away. His whole goal was to be voted Supreme Chancellor. And all the rest of this is just <laughs> to the, to the no, Trade Federation, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he, he did know the Jedi would show up. He is yeah. playing a part. But my question <laughs> is... He might not have known they were going to arrive that soon because the, it is implied that he's like... Oh, Chancellor Vorum sent him? That's surprising. Like, he might have thought, like, oh, that would have been... He's a little early, but that works for me. But what about Maul? Because... The Maul of it all? Maul failing is crucial to Sidious's plan. Do you th <laughs> so he, his intention was to sacrifice his apprentice? I don't think he... I, I, I don't think he intentionally thought, like, well, I'm going to send Maul to... Because if Maul had here. succeeded, then sure. Amidala's dead, and, like, the Federation actually wins, and then he's like, ah, shit. I think... Or does Maybe. it not matter? Does he win either way? I, well, I think that's it. Like, he, I, I'm sure, like, if Maul won, it's like, great, I just got a shortcut to what I ultimately wanted to do. But if he dies, eh. If he like, dies, I'll he dies. Just yeah. find another one. Like, like it's fine. Yeah, canonically, he's already grooming um, Count Dooku yeah. as his apprentice during this time. Which we'll learn more about in the next. Because so he, he has, he really has no allegiance to his apprentice. He sees them as, like, pawns But always to two there are. <clears throat> yeah. 
But you know, Palpatine plays fast and loose with that. But that's also <laughs> like th that's like the tr that is the traditional idea of the Sith. But the, but the Sith at this point haven't been heard about had have not been heard from in a long time. So the a Jedi, millennia. yeah. So the Jedi don't don't have like a modern understanding of what a modern Sith is. So mm -hmm. I think Palpatine is playing fast and loose with the rules to benefit himself and what his goals are. Mm. It's almost like the dark side have no rules. The breaking rules is their whole thing. Yeah. But, <laughs> More seductive. But, but also, um, like, what is it? Like 15 years happened between, or no, like 10 years happened between this movie and episode two. So that's a long time to like figure out what his next move Train is. Train to Dooku. Dooku, yeah. So. Christopher Lee, who so, already came in with some skills. Yeah, again, like I, I, I've referenced it a I've couple times. I've killed a man. Uh, I've killed several. <laughs> um, there's, there's a really good, uh, I think it's Tales of the Jedi on Disney Plus. It, it actually shows um, the, the same day that the that Qui Gon's funeral was happening. It's like what also is happening early. It's, like, it's right before they go to Qui Gon's funeral on Coruscant. What's happening on Coruscant? And it's Palpatine talking to Dooku about like. Wouldn't it be dope if you joined me? <laughs> Look what they did to your Padawan Qui Gon, and that suck. He's yeah. like, oh, that just makes me sad. Yeah, um, yeah. Hmm. It's a good little short. Nice. Here, hold Wait, on real, real so quick. Dooku was Qui Gon's boss. Dooku was Qui Gon's master. Yes. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so yeah. So yeah. Interesting. That's Interesting. And, and we learned that in um, Attack of the Clones. There's a point where Obi Wan's taken captive by Dooku, and he's like, "Oh, I'm so good to have finally met you, Obi Wan." Qui Gon spoke very highly of you. I yeah. was his master, and we force chatted all the time. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> it's like aim. We force. I would go QG you up, <laughs> <laughs> and he would say LMAO. <laughs> of course. Well, let's do this. Yeah. I know we always run long on these because it's fun, but we'll do our very best. <laughs> um, to knock this out and uh, keep Steve from hyperventilating and, and blowing a casket on some of this stuff here. But it opens with the Trade Federation, the opening crawl. They, they be taxing uh, and, <laughs> and the Jedi are coming to settle uh, the blockade of Naboo, see what's going on. Uh, and, you know, the the Federation, the Viceroy and the gang, what are they called? Nemoidians? Nemoidians, yeah. They're like, oh, we love ambassadors. Uh, and <laughs> oh my God, I haven't seen an ambassador in so long. <laughs> and we see the fucking <laughs> droids uh, and they're like, er? Yeah. They're super surprised someone's landing. Um, and then uh, Obi-Wan can feel something. He feels bad about something. I've he, got a bad feeling about this. And the implicate, which is a Star Wars line, right? Yeah. It's and in every movie. The implication is, is that Obi-Wan is a little more, mm, a little more sensitive to the force than even Qui-Gon. Cause like he, <clears throat> he, he, he can tell before Qui-Gon that something is amiss or Qui-Gon is maybe just more chill. And he's like, yeah, it'll be fine. Maybe he has more faith in the force. I think he's learned to like sort of suppress his his fears and and, and because fear and leads anxieties. to anger, anger yeah. leads to hate, sure. and hate leads to suffering. You got it. <laughs> and also, Qui Gon is very much a proponent of the living force. Like he's in this, you keep saying that is that a different thing than the force? Uh, well, it's it's not a different thing than the force. It's just a different way of perceiving. The it's force. like street smarts versus book smarts. Is it like Pentecostal versus like Baptist? <laughs> yeah, like uh, <laughs> Qui Gon will do some holy rolling on the, on the force floor. <laughs> Speaking, Speaking in tongues. In tongues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Boss Nance is really doing. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but no, the living force is a much more like naturalistic. You know, living in the moment. He's a hippie. Yeah, he's he very much weed. Oh yeah, turns a saber into a bong. Obi Obi Wan, would you like to hear my Grateful Dead albums? <laughs> <laughs> if you crush the Kyber crystal up and snort it, it's crazy. <laughs> It'll be a very good time. <laughs> but like practical effects in this, right off the bat, which is super fun. Like Absolutely, seeing seeing practical effects in the prequels to me is always fun because so much of this goes the way of the computer as Are you these about go on. TC fourteen. Or? Yeah, like well, like that, and like the set, and like the Nemoidians, and just there's a lot of stuff oh, yeah. here that is like actually real <laughs> and not just like generated. I just realized what my note meant. Now, <laughs> what, what was your note? <laughs> I'm embarrassed. <laughs> That's never stopped you before. <laughs> <laughs> it says why TC14 kind of. <laughs> oh, you feeling TC14? I think it's the first time we've seen a female voice in one of those robots, right? Ichuta. Uh, the, the Bespin one that we see. That's well, like, we don't know dialogue. if it's, we don't know their 
We don't know their gen- Don't gender these <laughs> Troy. Well, the voice actor. Come on, guys. Let's grow up. We know. They're humans. Uh, <laughs> he says that uh, the negotiations will be short, which comes back soon in a really satisfying way as a fan for me. Uh, but the Viceroy is, is upset that they're oh Jedi. God. Are you Brian, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So they say they need to uh, alert Lord Sidious. Uh, and, and immediately, like, the Viceroy's buddy is such a bitch. Like, he's, like, panics. Like, this game of yours has failed. We're going to die. And, uh, he's like, get this <laughs> pussy bitch out of my sight. And then, like, the way he just, like, <laughs> like <laughs> shuffles off screen is so sad. Because the whole time he's doing this little, like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. But and then, oh, how good. Extremely it, meek. Ian McDermott is so fucking good. I know. He's like, so good. I love, I do love When he told me that they, he was almost not Sidious, like the whole, everything this changes. franchise has got going for it is ruined if you don't do that. Well, <laughs> everything? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> well, apparently uh, Ian McDermott didn't, he was like really surprised that George wanted him to come back and reprise Palpatine because he just assumed he would hire a, a younger actor since this is a prequel. And George was, and apparently George was like, no, he called him and was like, Ian, you're going to, you want to be on Star Wars? He's like, okay, George, who am I playing? Because he didn't think he'd be Palpatine. He's, oh, you're going to be a senator. And he shows up on, he gets the script and he's like, oh, Senator Palpatine? <laughs> Barry in the lead there, George. Yeah. Why do you see how uh, I, I show how your face got all ugly? <laughs> People mean nothing to me. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the lightning. Remember how you're known for the lightning fingers? Well, yeah, it hit your face. What if that lightning came <laughs> back? Yeah, it'd make you look like that. It's poetry, it rhymes. <laughs> but anyway, he tells them, kill the Jedi, land your troops, it's going to be fine, right? Uh, so they blow the Jedi ship up. The poor humans in there are like, nah, we shouldn't have been Jedi taxis. This is terrible. Also, they like actually blew up that ship. Like, yeah, like it looks good. Yeah. yeah. And the people in it. Yeah. <laughs> Those actors are dead. Yeah. <laughs> actually, so the uh, Jedi the, Uber, not a good vocation. Not a good no. vocation at all. No. The uh, the the so there's the two pilots of that ship. There's the, the the male and the female pilot. The male pilot is actually also Newt Gunray, mm. also Kiati Mundi. That's the same actor. Silas something. I forget. Uh, yeah. Those names that guy mean nothing to me. Three characters in this one movie. Yeah. Who's Newt Gunray? He's, He's the Viceroy. The vice, viceroy. Oh, really? Yeah. And and Kiati Mundi is the Jedi Master with like the big long cone head and the oh, Really? That's yeah. him? Yeah. Your thoughts dwell on your mother, that guy. Yeah. I can tell because lots of thoughts dwell in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's levels to it. My head was also used as the tower in Raid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but not Raid Redemption. No, no. It's a different kind of movie. There's lots of uh, locations. <laughs> so they gas the Jedi. And ultimate, and Qui Gon's like, it's fine. We just won't breathe. Hold your breath. I love it, dude. And the, that scene where the doors open, they're all waiting outside. If it wasn't the dumbass ineffectual droids, it would be full of tension. And then the I love battle droids. I do too. Specifically in this movie, this is my favorite depiction of yeah. battle droids because they, even though they're a little silly, they're yeah. not hokey silly, which is what they become eventually. Yeah. Roger, Roger. Right. I remember being a the, little. Ki- the, the only scene I hate, hate is the one where they're like, to Coruscant. Uh, mm, yeah, uh, that's stupid. Mm, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> you're under arrest. Yeah. Why? They become such jokes. Um, but I remember being a little kid. I was a. I, I subscribed to the Star Wars Insider, which was the Star Wars magazine. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. And before this movie came out, they sent. It was one of the first things you got from Phantom Menace, like what it looked like. It was the cover, and it was a battle droid on like one of those Stap speeder bikes, yeah. the, the the ones where you stand up on. Mm-hmm. And it, like I remember vividly remember that photo with the headline. The new stormtrooper? Question mark. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. Like, kind of. They're just as effectual as one. They're just <laughs> meant to be fodder. Um, Check it out, but, Corporal. We'll cover you. But they come out badass as fuck because it's like that scene. It's like, it's like Spielberg directed it. You know, it's like TC14 comes waddling out oh, like, oh, excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and that, then, oh, that was in your dreams, actually. <laughs> that was in your notes. Yeah, I guess it. I did not expect Chris to sexualize <laughs> TC fucking 14. <laughs> Who knew that all three of you had to like do that. was be painted silver and have like a vaguely set attractive I, woman voice? All I said was, why TC14 kinda? <laughs> Dot, dot, dot. Why TC-14 dummy thick? <laughs> Jesus. But that scene is cool. And then they cut through the the, the droids. Uh, and then they fucking start, like, melting the door. Like, I loved all of this as a kid. Oh, my God. I loved it through. last night. Like, they're terrified of these Jedi. Like, they know yeah. what they can do. But even, even though they're in full power, their abilities are still... 
you get the impression that they're like rarely resorted to and they're they're the stuff of myth to most people in the universe. Yeah. Because yeah. the Neimoidians are like losing their shit. They're yeah. like, oh, oh, what the fuck? We're yeah. going to die. Even though, you know, like with the benefit of hindsight, the Jedi don't in no them. way where no. are the Jedi going to go in there and kill those no. Neimoidians. They're just going to be like, what the fuck? In my mind, they are. Like when, if Qui-Gon gets through. I have a set of skills. He goes full taken on their ass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and then we get. Give so me a name. I did a video about this a couple of years ago. Uh, because I was rewatching these because I was watching them with my son for the first time uh, when he went through a Star Wars phase. And I, it was something I just noticed for the first time that apparently is like a whole fucking thing in the Star Wars universe. Is it the speed? Yes. And I, I, I ran I home and told force. you about this and you're like, oh, that's a can of worms. And I'm like, of course it is because <laughs> it's a Star Wars. But the droid decals showed up. And those those things are really cool. <laughs> so cool. They roll Super around. Cool, yeah. It's dope. And they do they do this like uh, this like force slide <laughs> speed. Yeah, <laughs> that they that I called it the Jedi dash. There is a name for it though, right? Like the the, oh, the I, ability that they utilize I, in this it's moment. It's called force, force speed, speed I don't know. in the games. So. They never use it again. No, at any point. Well, they use the jump, which franchise. is like essentially like a version of that. Kind of, but not really. Like for instance, if Obi Wan. This is where it's kind of angering. He should have used that. If Obi-Wan does end. this <laughs> in the, like the red uh, laser hallway, <clears throat> Qui-Gon doesn't die. You know right. what I mean? Right. Or right. if they do it in battle, right. people are fucking toast. No, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yet they only use it right here in this one moment that, to get away and then they go through the ventilation shaft. The thing that it would work for me if they didn't film it the way they do because the way it's filmed, it looks like a jump cut that yeah. they just like added a blur like, they got away real quick. Oh. Uh, and it's so it just looks. I wish they stupid. had dropped smoke. That would have been dope if, like, they're like, here we go. Or like, <laughs> what if? Poof. What if, like, they showed it where, where, like, the rest of the world went slow motion and they stayed in like their motion and just like, oh, like, like ran off. it. Yeah, like, like, like Quicksilver from the X Men movies. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. But just the way they film it, it literally, it literally is like a jump cut. Obi Wan like bends backwards as blaster bolts are going past, past oh. his head, Matrix style. Just go full there Rebel Moon yeah, on right. it. <laughs> Do you love that movie? I'm, I've, I'm just I've not, not realizing seen it. it. I've not seen it. <laughs> I think you would like it. I hate would it I? So much. It just looks like a mishmash of just like every other sci-fi film. It's it, it is. It's if Star Wars is made by an edge lord. That's all it uh, is. Past. I can't wait for the rated R yeah. cut. It's going to be a masterpiece. Uh, so they. <laughs> They discover the invasion army and uh, and we get the iconic uh, he some charm that <clears throat> Lucas didn't sap from you and McGregor. <laughs> you were right. The negotiations were well, short. short. <laughs> uh, and I just then, love how they get smirk. Yeah, it's I love you. But I, I do love how they get down. They're like, oh, my God, an invasion army. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Queen Amidala calls. And uh, and then they play dumb. She she calls with that big dick energy. Her <laughs> weird accent too, that she that You've she gone just like this time. abandons for the rest of the movies. It's so weird. <laughs> what he whatever he told her to do was bad advice. I don't know anything about the ambassador. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. so weird. Oh my god. They went here. They went here. And then Senator Palpatine ends up playing dumb. You know, with the council. Uh, and since we know his name is <clears throat> Palpatine, and we know it's Ian McDermott, we're like. Aware the whole time, right? How, how How's this going to work? A reveal that was actually a fun reveal watching with uh, Erica because they cut to that scene and Palpatine's in the hologram and his hologram starts like phasing out because they've cut the comms. And Queen Amidala's like Senator Palpatine, and Erica goes, "Oh!" and looks at me like that's the guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was fun. Yeah, it's neat for the for the casuals yeah. um, like myself. At this point, they get down to the, so they they stow away and get down to the Naboo, and Qui Gon runs into Jar Jar. Mm -hmm. Is this the the score that you love though, the invasion score? It is. It's it's so good. Dun, 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 Does it start dun, playing here? It, I, it doesn't until they march to the square to with the droids. Yeah. 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 Uh, but Qui Gon runs into Jar Jar, who's like <laughs> muy muy excited, and uh, <laughs> he loves him, and he tells him that Gunga City is the safest place. Uh, but actually, I can't go there because Jar Jar is being banished and uh, <laughs> for being clumsy. He's a beautiful diver, ah. though. We can all agree on that. Oh, my God. And then like the smallest splash. <laughs> yeah. hey, Such a good diver. If, if he made that there, and if they like panned over and there's like a set of Olympic judges, all of them be thrown up tens. tens. Yeah. Just tens. tens across the board from a boy Jar Jar. Yeah. 
They get down to the city. Jar uh, squared. Which uh, is a hidden city. They're, like the pressure of the water as they descend must have hurt so bad. How cool are the little breathing devices? Though, Super cool. That Jedi that. just yeah. keep on hand. And then I like how case. when they. If they didn't when, have those, by the way, Jar Jar's plan. Bad done. idea. Yeah, done. Yep. <laughs> or they I, I would just I'll, have to wait until he like goes down there and like comes back up like he does. He would just be arrested at the, end of the, the first time though. Yeah. You know, as soon as he dove down there and left him, Quag going, be like, all right, let's go before he comes back. <laughs> <laughs> they just walk somewhere else. <laughs> Why do they go to Gunga? That's a terrible idea. They could easily sneak into Naboo. Because it was the most safe, safest place. They were going to be crushed. It's apparently not safe. Or crunched. Because later, crunched. Later they 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 flee that hidden city. To the surface in the woods, it makes no sense. Right. <laughs> it's, they, they just they just needed to set up that there is this whole other community of people, underwater city, the yeah. Gungan that live. The in city's under, cool under, though. Underwater. Like oh, they the don't Gunga. actually. Li- it's not Atlantis. They need air, but yeah. like so they make the bubbles. Like it's nice. No, Oda Gunga is a really well designed city. Look, it looks gorgeous. Everything about the Gungans. I think is designed well. Like I yeah. like the look of them. I, I I like the lore behind the underwater city. I like the the like symbiotic relationship they have. James Cameron was taking notes back yeah, then. Yeah, no, like, like like it's like it's all really rich and cool. It's just the problem is the envoy to the Gungans is fucking Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> it's Binks my bussy. Binks my bussy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, they're very upset to see Jar Jar and specifically I, the outsiders. I love General or uh, Captain Tarples. Yeah, I, I sometimes try to imagine. Jaja, like, what jump, if, Jaja. What if Captain Tarples was like the Gungan? Like, because Captain Would Tarples be so is much fucking better. cool. Yeah. <laughs> like he, out of, out he's of the, not a joke. Out of the three Gungans in this movie, Captain yeah. Tar- Tarples is my boy. Yeah. How wooed? How wooed? <laughs> <laughs> not again, Jaja. <laughs> you should uh, go into the boss this time. <laughs> so he ends up doing like a Jedi mind trick on Boss Nass, uh, who is like tricked by it, but also his ploy to kill the Jedi is still in effect. Yeah. Like he, he manages to give him a ship and stuff, but tells him to do the, and by the way, he the telegraphs it like a motherfucker. Cool. Yeah. Water. Nothing diabolical. Where about. you'll be. Did I say that? <laughs> the planet goal. Yeah. But this is a good guy that they fight with at the end. <laughs> yeah. Binks. You also got the life pack with this and his and. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he saves Jar Jar. I love the ship, by the way, the little underwater ship that they're given. The bongo? Yeah, the yeah. bongo's dope. Uh, ooh, gooberfish. Yeah. I do love how, <laughs> how he's like, we used to give you the Oda bongo, and then Obi-Wan's like, what's a bongo? <laughs> like, he's like, I hope it's like, a ship yeah, or we're fucked. I, I hope it. What if he <laughs> just like brings out a drum? <laughs> like, can I, it's like, how's this going to help? <laughs> like, uh, this is how we get to the planet core? <laughs> Okay. All right. It's for entertainment. And they also, we see at the end, like they do party. So they do bang drums. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we get, you know, a pretty awesome sequence. I think the whole, uh, I, I can distinctly remember being 12 and are watching you, this. Are you for a fan the, of the big goober fish? Yes. The th- watching this for the 13th time and me and my two, Andy and Nathan looking over each other. There's always a bigger fish <laughs> and just popcorn. I like, love yes. the design of all, all of these fucking like, Godzilla's underwater. just hanging out. Yeah, there. It's so cool. Like mm-hmm. Naboo is cool. Like it's got a lot of good stuff. Yeah. And the idea of a planet that had like the core of the planet is just a series of tunnels and oceans. Yeah. And you can just go from one end of the planet to the other just by, you know, going underwater. It doesn't make sense, but it's cool. <laughs> yeah. It's cool. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. From what we know of how planets work, weird yeah. to have a Godzilla just in the middle hanging out, but. I'm down with it. Hey, also, have you seen uh, Godzilla versus Kong? That's I mean, that's true. just the Hollow Earth, okay? That's, 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 how how Earth, that's how our planet is. <laughs> uh, but Sidious just, thinks that Amidala is going to be super easy to deal with and thinks nothing of her. And then the the Viceroy and his buddy don't report that the Jedi are missing because there's nothing to report. That's what he thinks. I'm going to challenge you to remember the Viceroy's name by the end of this episode. Uh, Tina Turner? Turner? <laughs> Faye. You were Faye, I went to Tina, Tina Faye. What, cunt. Cunt? <laughs> <laughs> you might want to flag that one. <laughs> what did you say his name was? Newt. Newt. Send Newt. Not cunt. Newt Gunray. Cunt Gunray is <laughs> on here. Cunt Gunray. <laughs> That's his little brother. Oh my God. Cunt's cunt okay to say now because sometimes people serve it. <laughs> <laughs> you know hey this is your podcast <laughs> whatever I'm just learning I haven't centered the C word in years <laughs> okay <laughs> so any <Yeah>. who's old <clears throat> uh, oh, oh can, can I just uh, just like briefly go back to uh, when they're in the bongo 
Jar Jar's <laughs> freaking out, right? Yeah. yeah and and oh! Qui Gon so chill puts his like puts his hand on him and Jar Jar like relaxes. Did he Vulcan neck pinch him? <laughs> he must have given, no, he like used his midi to like chill him out a little bit. Yeah. Like I, I, I thought he just gave him a little like, it's okay, buddy, but he was freaking out because he says, calm down, I'll be okay. And then he like passed like, ah. Yeah. I, I just assume he just passed out because then Obi-Wan goes, I, he overdid it. Yeah. It's an ability he has called the diazepam touch. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> it's good on flights yeah, uh, and yeah. in a bongo. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, Qui-Gon's always chill. Like throughout all of this in the back seat, he's just like, we're going to be okay. Yeah. There's always a big, I like the, I like to imagine he's not like meditative, but he's just kind of over life. I mean, he <laughs> so does just like, meditate mid battle later on. I love so. it. I love it. And he's all sweaty. Yeah. He's chill. Yeah. Uh, new song is a bop. This is where the uh, droid invasion song dun, 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 comes dun, in. It's the dun, troops dun, moving dun, into dun, Naboo. Dun, dun, <clears throat> so dun, good. Dun, dun, they immediately dun. capture the queen and her people. Apparently, the Nubians don't have a, an army. <laughs> like the Gungans do, but like they put up no fight. Yeah, well, yeah, Naboo is like a peaceful sovereignty <clears throat> that doesn't mm. really have like the even you the starships they, they have. Make a guy like Palpatine in that environment. Yeah, yeah peaceful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know you guys, is Darth Plagueis the master of Sidious? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think that's still canon now. For a while, it was questionable if that got to, uh, erased when Disney took over, but I think Disney reinstated the- And Plagueis taught him, unbeknownst to most people, the, like, the Horcrux ability. <laughs> <laughs> I think he wanted to teach him the Horcrux ability, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Any whoozle. Uh, the casuals are like so lost right now, but I've, you know, I've got a lot of diehard Star Wars friends. They haven't heard the story of Darth Plagueis the Wise. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a story Jedi would tell you. No, that's true. <laughs> they, they will at some point. I'm surprised that that would be up for like erasure because they like literally say that in, in this yeah, episode three. They can't. Well, yeah. well, there's like a whole Darth Plagueis novel that was out that like explained a lot of like yeah. the relationship of Darth Plagueis to Darth Sidious. And I think <clears throat> that novel is technically not canon anymore, but they've like. But what he says kept in a lot episode of it. three is is still intact, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. I have a question for you guys about uh, Gungan lingo. Yeah, is uh, what does bomb bad mean? Badass. Right. I thought it was just like trouble. They, they use it as a pejorative for to Jar Jar, yeah. but then later I he guess says trouble that, is better. Yeah, but then later he says that Jar Jar is promoted to bomb bad general. Oh, uh, which it makes that confusing. Well, maybe from Captain Tarple's <clears throat> point of view, like it's troubling that he's been promoted to general. <laughs> mm, Actually, true. yeah, that's probably Does true. Does it be yeah, problematic, yeah. boss? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so Jedi, the Jedi do uh, bomb bad shit to the rescue, right? And uh, they rescue the queen and they have to like <laughs> do all kinds of cool shit. Uh, and I like that you at this point rewatching it, you know, maybe even the first time, I don't remember what I thought about the whole because you knew Natalie Portman was cast as Padme Amidala, right? <clears throat> Going in as a Star Wars nerd. I think so. Well, yeah. did you know that? I didn't. I don't think I was young enough. I think I was too young to really like fully. So was the Padme mm -hmm. is the handmaiden or the queen is the handmaiden at the end a reveal to you on the first well, watch? Yeah, because mm -hmm. like IMDb was not a thing back then. So like we really didn't go into these movies or, yeah. or at least I did not like researching mm -hmm. the cast and their names and stuff before I saw the movie. I yeah. just watched, watched so the movie. On a rewatch, I really love that you can see her kind of defer to her. <clears throat> and in this right. moment, the handmaiden says, we are brave, your highness. And that's her giving her her actual instructions on how right. to answer yeah. this. And it's right. nice. Yeah. Like th there are whole, you know, articles, videos dedicated to picking out where Pad, when Padme is the queen versus when Kira Knightley is the queen. Because Kira Knightley looks shockingly like her. Yeah, supposedly there's yeah, a- Especially there's with a, the makeup. There's an often quoted rumor where Kira Knightley's mother had a hard time telling them apart on set when they would, when she would go pick them up or whatever mm. uh, because they look so similar to each other. And it's true because there are some times where you're like, oh yeah, that's that definitely is Kira Knightley. Well, you only see her in makeup, right? Right. And yeah. when she's she Natalie doesn't Portman's in makeup to... too, like they do look a lot alike. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, but at the mm -hmm. end, when she reveals herself, when she's talking to Boss Nass, yeah, uh, it's definitely Kira Knight. Oh yeah, like, yeah, and yeah. it's like nice. Well, because yeah. well, because you're seeing them both at well. the same time, so you're like, well, I can yeah, see it now. It's kind of like I don't know if you guys have felt this phenomenon, but it's like when you work at a a a, a, pl a place of employment that requires a uniform. Like if you work at a McDonald's and you're always wearing the uniform, but you see your coworker outside of the uniform, mm, yeah. outside of work, you don't, it's like you don't recognize them at first because mm. they're not in their uniform. Right. So it's a little bit like that mm -hmm. where I had that problem when I was a stripper. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, cherry. 
<laughs> Destiny. <laughs> um, I, I love that. I love that they send 10 droids to escort the most important POW to mm-hmm. like, yeah. It's, also, Obi-Wan's got a move that I don't think he uses anymore after this. He does it twice in this sequence. Split like a jump? The double kick? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> it's kind of fucking awesome, especially with those cool boots. He's a young man. Yeah. There's, like, <laughs> there's also that move where like Qui-Gon does this thing where he like slices, then like flips it and like stashes it. Yeah. Oh, yes. so cool. Like just like that, like fluid motion. He does awesome. Yeah. The choreography is great. Yeah. Uh, big fan. The, yeah. the Dabu cruiser looks so good. And we talked about this on a previous episode. I love that ship. Yeah. Uh, the blockade shoots at them. And then we get, of course, we got to <clears> bring tr- OG trilogy characters in it however we can. So one of the droids that tries to fix the shield generator is R2D2. R2D2. I don't hate, hate this. I think this is a good intro to him. I like the intro to R2. It's cool, yeah. but like if you, the whole like Anakin is the one that built 3PO. That's so egregious. Wildly, statistically improbable. I that, will say that that did blow, blow, blow my mind the first time I watched this movie. <laughs> You're like, oh my God. I was like, whoa, Darth <laughs> Vader built C3PO. That's crazy. Wait, how does he not know, know, know him later on then? Yeah, it doesn't make any but sense. And there's a really. Who finished building him? Probably Klieg Lars or, uh, or Shmi. Shmi just threw some gold on him and was like, you're done. Yeah. I did like the line see through has where I would never be on a starfighter. Heavens. <laughs> there, there's a really good, um, it's again, it's not canon anymore, but there was this really great comic book that I forget uh, where it was, but it takes place in empire strikes back when they set the trap for Han, Han, Leia, Chewie and three PO and they blow up three PO. And there's this panel where they're like, sir, the stormtroopers are like, sir, we, we got their droid at C-3PO and champ in pieces. And there's a really, it's one of the most iconic, like comic book frames of star Wars, um, where Darth Vader is alone and he picks up C-3PO's head and he has like, actually really like, he that. remembers him. And yeah. it, it's like a really powerful, like, uh, sell of a comic. But again, I don't think it's canon anymore, but it's one of my favorite comic yeah. book frames of all time. I think that was tales, right? Oh, I think you're right. I think that might've yeah. been tales. Yeah. And, and Tails and Tails also had the Darth Maul um, uh, when Darth Maul comes back and like like jumps out of the sand. Oh, and, and Owen Lars shoots him. Yeah, that was really cool. <laughs> that is one of my favorite comics yeah. ever. Yeah, nerds. Yep. Yeah, yep. Killing me. You love it. <laughs> <laughs> you love it. But, I can't but wait no, till we get to our Game of Thrones our, coverage. I'll, I'll get you back. Yeah. <laughs> I, I save some pussy for the rest of us, Chris. Uh, but no, I, I really do like the introduction of R2-D2 on this because, you know, he's a royal droid. He sh- it makes sense that he was from royalty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just think it's funny. This is fine. But the whole scene mm-hmm. where he's like being brought before the queen, like what a great fucking droid. And it's like a medal ceremony. And but they're like all standing. we had that at the end of the first first movie. We get one of those at the end of this one too, but this whole scene where they're like the droid who we designed to do a job and it did it. Holy shit. (laughs) Yeah. But like, it's it's cool. Like when they're watching the feed of like, like each droid, like being like picked off by like, I guess like the shield generator just like wasn't generating shield shot. I mean, let's be real, but he did fix it. And the reason that they survived is because of him. Well, the specifically Rick Ole, who's the pilot. He says something where he, he he says what RTD, RTD2 did to fix it. Bypassed it. And he's incredibly shocked. Like, wow, that's really smart. So he, it's almost like he's a computer. (laughs) <laughs> my, the, the, sorry. the thing that I have a problem with this scene I think is my like, uh, hatred of AI is coming through with R2-D2 right now <laughs> chat GBT don't listen to yeah. uh, no the uh, the thing that I laugh about this scene is they're like the shield generator's been hit send out the droids and these blockade things can't <clears throat> hit the fucking ship but damn are they doing a good job bullseyeing beow, beow. The, the also droids well, on I like the to think the pilot is dodging the bullets and then it's just knocking off the fucking droid barnacles instead <laughs> <laughs> How did the shield generator get hit if it was generating shield though? Maybe uh-huh. maybe he didn't have it forward facing. He hadn't flipped it over to the forward facing oh, shield Jesus. yet. Come on, Rick. Come on, Rick. I mean, look at the look at all the pilots for the Naboo security flight guard, all right? They're all wearing bathrobes, okay? That's Can true, we really yeah. take them true. serious? They were true. sleeping when this <laughs> happened. They sleep late on Naboo. But the hyperdrive is leaking. They're not going to make it to Coruscant, so they need to land on Tatooine, which is controlled by the Huts. Uh, but the Huts are equally as dangerous as the Trade Federation, but they're not looking for us, so that gives us an edge, which is, you know, that's fair. Uh, but then it cuts back to Palpatine. Uh, 
It's it's out of our range, sir. We're not gonna be able to find him. Not for a Sith. And pop up Darth Maul. Oh my God! Now they're like two of them. <laughs> Just like <laughs> like the concept of like a meeting when he was like, "Look, I'm gonna make this call. Don't step into frame until I say." Anything about it's the like Sith. a oh FaceTime? Oh <laughs> it's a FaceTime. <laughs> love it. When your buddy like leans into frames, like so. <laughs> <laughs> I just love. He I was also, like pounding a twisted T. <laughs> <laughs> a Mike's Mike's hard. Yeah. Are we going to reveal ourselves to the Jedi? <laughs> oh, last we, have last we will have revenge, bro. <laughs> I just love the idea of like Sidious texting them before the call. Like, all right, listen, we're, I'm going to make a call, but it's in the conference room. So you have to sit down because I will also be sitting down. <laughs> And it'll be very important for something I'm going to do later. I'm not going to tell you, but you have to be sitting. I don't want to look like the only asshole sitting. <laughs> but then he, Maul is standing, though. No, I'm saying, like, it's funny. Like, what are the... Because usually when you have a hologram call, the person standing. Yeah. yeah. So do they have to be like, all right, I'm going to be sitting for this one. I also want you to sit because I don't want to feel stupid. <laughs> <laughs> he plans it out with his with the force. Uh, the, the actor do you who plays... have time for a Zoom call, Nemoidians? <laughs> Circle yes or no. <laughs> who is the actor that played Darth Maul? Because Ray he... Park. So Ray Park is the physical body of He was fucking Darth Maul. huge for a Peter's, second. Peter Savinovich is the voice of... Darth Maul. Oh, it's not Ray's voice? Mm. Interesting. The, George loves that. I know, it's weird. But the, the choreography of Darth Maul was so impressive, and he ended up playing, like, the frog guy in X-Men yes. as well, yes. and he was Toad. huge for a hot minute. Toad. Toad. He Sorry. was, uh, <laughs> was he X or the frog guy? Really? <laughs> I'm not Jesus. wrong. It's racist. You know what happens when a frog is struck by lightning? <laughs> The same as everything else. <laughs> I forgot the iconic <laughs> line. Yeah, it dies, motherfucker. I'm Storm. Halle Berry is queen. <laughs> Any hoozle. Uh, so the Sith's going to find him. R2D, uh, R2-D2 is getting credit. Uh, and I love this scene. <laughs> Something I never noticed until last night. So Padme is the queen, right? No, I was going to bring this up. <laughs> she, she's the queen. Right. She's hiding as a handmaiden. And her bodyguard is posing <laughs> as the queen. And she takes that moment. It's almost like she's resentful against her. And she's going to utilize this. Like, the go pole. scrub the droid. Yeah. Padme specifically, clean this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> I was going to bring that up. I was like, why? Like, why was she other the ladies chosen? there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the perfect. It's, it's the perfect play. Hey, you see, I think people would notice. Like, man, she really isn't giving Padme shit. Oh, how do. the turntables <laughs> have turned right now, Padme. I just dropped a huge dump, and it won't flush. I'm gonna need you to take care of that. <laughs> Go plunge it. Padme's like, oh, I'm gonna get yeah. you back, bitch. You're not allowed to get a plunger either. <laughs> nope, nope. Uh, but yeah, so they land on the outskirts of Tatooine, uh, and you, you know. Her Highness commands you take Padme with you. I'm no more commands right now. I love Qui Gon right now. I'm not taking commands anymore. My shift ended at three. I was being so polite. I'm a fucking Jedi. I'd literally kill all of you with zero effort. So no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but oh, I'm just curious about the planet. Well, she could like die. Like, it's a super dangerous it's place. Called Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> look it up. And then like they like look at like where the spaceport is, and then the like expanse of sand that they have to cross. Like that must have taken them hours to walk walk to that. Man, I didn't see it's any so any sun, suntan lotion between I and no, I was gonna Jedi dash the whole way there. But now I got two nerds. <laughs> I yeah. think aquatic Jar Jar Binks would have fucking died within a minute of walking <sighs> all those tunes. He said it was hurting his skin. This is murder on they don't even have skin. S- still suits. I say that every time I go out in the sun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so they get the tour of Tatooine. We meet Watto and Anakin. Ugh, uh, who who uh speaks Hatties when they walk in until Qui-Gon talks to him and then he switches to basic, which which I thought was a neat touch. I didn't know even know that anybody w- was good at coding. Wait, wait, well, sorry. <laughs> basic. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. It was, it was dumb. Basic <laughs> is the English of. It's like the common yeah. tongue. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, I, I, it's dumb, but at, at the same time, it's like, oh, that's what you want to talk. OK. Oh, uh, you speak yeah. American. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they're looking for Nubian parts. I, I didn't clock the the ship, the, the make and model. But, you love uh, that ship. Uh, he wants a new hyperdrive. I do. I do love that ship. Was it a uh, TC-14? No. Hyper, no. Wait, TC-14 it, was the droid, right? Yeah. It's so a T-14 was, hyperdrive. The T-14 yeah. uh, that, that he's looking for. Uh, and by the way, young Anakin has got Riz. He immediately... Clocks Padme like, what's up? Are you, Are you an, an angel? angel? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, 
<laughs> and she's like, are you a slave? No, I'm a person. But, but then he Anakin. refers to himself as a slave later on, too. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, oh, I'm sorry. Your ways are strange to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the dialogue in these scenes are so Where painful. are those little robots with the nose? Pit droids? Pit droids. They're brought back in like uh, Boba Fett or Mandalorian yeah, or something, aren't they? Yeah, they're <clears> in those, yep. Yeah. Pit droids are awesome. I fucking love pit droids. They're cool. Uh, but we find out that Republic credits are no good. It's not good money to Watto. And so it is a something more real. And he's a Toydarian, which means the Jedi mind tricks I, don't work on him. I love that line. <clears throat> mind tricks don't work on me. Only money. Only money. But do you remember the DVD menu that was like narrated by Watto? Narr no. I don't remember the narration of what like when you would click stuff he'd be like <laughs> it's like his voice I mean I watched the DVD last night like like I watched the like first D DVD version of that movie and and that was you remember mind. menus that would be like that and oh, you yeah. would like score, yeah, 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 yeah. oh you're going to the special features eh you know it was just, oh, oh, you want to know the director's commentary oh, <laughs> I happen to have a chance cube yeah. <laughs> yeah. check out the blue butter you <laughs> Exactly, exactly. I think that was him. You like that? No doubts about that, eh? <laughs> so like the huts, mind tricks don't work on toy Darians at all. They're just strong, mentally strong creatures, right? Uh, Jar Jar is hungry. He ends up trying to steal a snack, which is totally inappropriate. Also, Jar Jar speaks hut tees because because that because that guy like with the vendor cart of the things like 50 whoopiums speaks at him and yeah. he like understands it. How did he learn Currency is a language that all oh, languages yeah. Is, yeah, <laughs> has no true. language barrier. Right. Yep. Yep. It's I just do like love, mind tricks. I do love following the journey of that toad that Jar Jar tries to eat because he gets it in his mouth, realizes the price. Like, oh, I have to pay for things. Seven whoopee. But two a I don't want to make a one whoopee. <laughs> <laughs> and then it goes into Sabalba's soup. And but Sabalba the, eats it later. Yeah, and Sabalba. Yeah, I don't think he paid for it. I don't think nah, he dropped his like, whoopee. Free snack. Free snack. He flings it at the ball back. I'm sure the vendor was like, I can't sell it. It's been in several people's mouths. <laughs> that's that's true. True. Oh, it's just going to yeah. be on my ass. E even on Tatooine, that's inappropriate. <laughs> Anakin walks up at that moment because he had just been told to clean a couple racks and then he could go home. Yippee. And uh, <laughs> there's so much yippee in this movie. I've forgotten how many times yippee is a part of this I, I movie. Love, that's when, how children talk. That's what he says when he's freed from slavery. <laughs> yippee. <laughs> it, it is. And he's like, wait. My mom. Uh, <laughs> That's how small people talk. <laughs> what do you call them, kids? <laughs> Anakin, Anakin talks shit and ends up helping uh, Jar Jar get away from the Doug named Sabalba. An especially dangerous Doug called Sabalba. <laughs> <laughs> Sebulba's design is so cool. Like, yeah, like I mean, like I the Sebulba. CGI is like obviously not great, but if they had done bad. better, he would have looked so good. Like the way he moves and like the way his like nostrils flare, yeah. and, like like his like arms are weak. Like he's it's just a really good design. He's animated really well too. Like there's that point where he's like leaning on his one arm and he's gonna hit him with his yeah. his big arm, it's but he's so choking cool. him with his little feet hands and <laughs> yeah. yeah. I followed all of that. And it's 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 kind of messed <clears throat> up because like uh, Anakin walks up. He's like, hey, I'm going to beat you at that race tomorrow. So Bulba was like, OK, at least I'm not a slave. <laughs> like, <laughs> Jesus also, Christ. The, the race that Anakin's not even in yet because the, the, the pod's not done. He doesn't have the entry Eve. fee. Yeah. Whatever. It's it's like he's the, just talking shit. The boon to Eve's tomorrow. <laughs> This episode was sponsored by BetterHelp. Folks, it's 2024. What does everybody do in the new year? They make resolutions. They set goals. How about we don't do that? I mean, you can. It's obviously nice to have goals, but it's also a good exercise to focus on things that you like about yourself. You know, not making all those high pressure goals that you might fail at and just feel worse. You can set smaller goals. And I think therapy can be a good way to access things that you enjoy about your life and focusing on the positive, the gratitude. And BetterHelp is a good way to do that. If you've never given BetterHelp a try, it's therapy that's entirely online. You can do it all from your home and access a therapist by filling out a questionnaire. And if you end up not liking that therapist, you can switch. Again, along with the theme of this ad, uh, no pressure whatsoever. They're not going to have their feelings hurt by it. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash streaming things today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash streaming things. Thank you.
Spring is just around the corner, ladies and gentlemen. So how about we spring into action and give a special shout out to all of the patrons who keep the lights on over here at Streaming Things. And I want to give a special shout out to our super patrons for the month of March. Thank you. Stanton Valentino, Mattelstat, Bryce Coppin, Susie Callahan, Anthony Corona, Sunshine, Huckleberry Cauliflower, Ashley Hazen, Mike from New Hampshire, Brett X, Emily Scarano, Lil Tickler, Svento7, Jay Scramo, Bluff Pum, AK Ashley Ray, Adam Busby, Wendy O'Laughlin, Jason Hawkins, Big Butthorn, Conrad, Kaylee Sampson, Rabbit Dog in a Barbie Car, Charlie Friday, Alexis Adler, Peaches, Emmy, Haley B, Joe Velez, John Collins, Amanda King, Trisha Bueller, Sun Loving Mortal, Suzanne Road, Jen Robinson, Kalisha Reeves, Aaron Armstrong, Kevin Strother, Ashley Powers, Stephen V, Casey McCain, and Enza. Thank you all so much for supporting Streaming Things and let's get back to the show. Knock and the crew get a, a message from home uh, and it's a fake message from the governor and uh, C.O. Bibble. Yeah, that guy. And that's a, his name. You can't yeah. don't put some spec on C.O. Bibble's Come name, up. my guy. Co Bibbs. <laughs> And this, there's a storm brewing at that exact second. And Anakin's like, you better come to my house. Those storms are dangerous. And Sand Padme can sleep in my very, room. Very dangerous. dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> come on. <laughs> Yippee. Uh, we meet Anakin's mom. Who can is I just named- say, so sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, the tenements they built for, for this set. Really cool. Like, I, I think cause, those are cause a real we had just thing, seen, right? Cause we had just, oh, wait, really? Seriously? I think that's like a real, like, Think like that's not uh, I could be mistaken. Good, but make your point. I'll look it up. So like at, like up to this point, we had just seen like round huts like by themselves on on like in the middle of n- nowhere. But this is like this looks like a real like city, like like yeah. an actual place where people live. And I like seeing like the density there and like the architecture of Tatooine that they built for this specific thing. It was just cool. Yeah, I agree. It's nice. It's nice. <clears throat> and we get to meet Shmi. Yeah. That's her name, right? Mm-hmm. Shmi. Uh, previous first mate of Captain Hook, I think. Wait, in, really? In a former life. Oh, oh yeah. Smee. Smee is oh. S-M-E-E is is Bob Hoskins and Hook. Okay, but not She's Shmi. S-H-M-I. Ah, yeah. Shmi. so that was, that was but, not but the same character. Close. My bad. <laughs> I thought it was. I was like, her life has been wild. Yeah. If yeah you I think th- about it. So the, yeah, yeah, those are real things. Oh, Wait, I'm those sorry. Are real places. It's, um, it's a place called Ksar Hadada. Um, I'm trying to look at, it's in Tunisia, of course. Okay. Um, but yeah, those are actual like homes that, that look like that in wow. Tunisia. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I was, I did not know that those were real. Yeah. I think they might've, I think like the, the they, front face of like the Skywalker quarters. They changed some things. I think those are probably a set, but like, um, the, the one where they're like on the porch when Skywalker or, uh, yeah. Qui-Gon and Shmi are on the porch watching them play. Like that's a real place yeah Yeah. there's some set dressing there um but then that's egg on my face we see (laughs) dumbass we see (laughs) egg face we see 3po his parts my parts are showing my parts um what do you mean naked uh there's another trick message um by the way the the comm device that qui-gon keeps using to talk to obi-wan razor right uh (laughs) no i think it's like a woman's razor that they oh i thought you meant like the razor phone no, <laughs> that would have been dopey. Like flip, <laughs> Obi Wan. I'm gonna. I need to check some blood. Flip. <laughs> but I had one of those. That was one of the toys that I had. So the action figures, I believe, came um, with a with a uh, with an electronic chip, and there was a base that you could swipe that yeah. chip across. Right? Yes, and I remember that those. was and that was the device. Yes, yeah. And I, I had that, and I would like play with it. Yeah. Hello, Obi. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a Gillette razor that they've sort of added bits added to. bits and bops to. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> nice. This is where we're like Maul knows they're on Tatooine and he has a conversation with uh, Sidious, and he's like, "Yeah, hey, go get I him. I believe in you." Ourselves to the Jedi. And then we get the dinner scene where oh, that's right. uh, he talks about how they blow up slaves on Tatooine. <laughs> they've got like implants. They're, they're part Which, of the Suicide the way, Squad. The implants not removed when Anakin is freed. I'm working on designing a tracker to find mine. Uh, and Anakin just keeps wanting to talk about pod racing. And they're like, fine, let's talk about it. And I, I know, yeah, on, 
I, I've seen him on Moktara or whatever he says. <laughs> Malastair. Malastair. Yeah. yeah. And that's the guys that are like, Grand, Grand, yeah. the three eyed yeah. ones. Yeah. I'm proud of you for knowing that. <laughs> that's I'm really proud of you. <laughs> Just because I watched this last night. Um, but yeah, he talks about that. And uh, I love there's this line where Anakin's like, you're a Jedi, right? Have you come to free us? And Qui-Gon's like, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, He's no. just straight like, definitely not. Don't have time for that. It is kind of wild that Qui-Gon's like, ah, hands are tied. I can't really, no. Yeah, because they're like, I thought slavery was illegal. And they're like, yeah, but, yeah, but so like, Tatooine's not part of the Republic. There's no, no senatorial the representative. Rim, so it's mm. way beyond the, the jurisdiction yeah. at this point. Yeah. None of this jurish my diction <laughs> crap. Exactly. But, it, but it is kind of like really sort of funny that he at least doesn't take Shmi with him. Like, because you think a Jedi would be like, yeah, slavery's wrong. I'm going to save this mo the mother as well. But he's Especially like, one that's ah, known. Well, theoretically, though, do? like they could just like press the button to like pop her head if if they stole her, right? Yes. Yeah, but I feel like they would have figured out a way around that. Especially one like uh, Qui-Gon, who's known for being a loose cannon, breaking rules. We find that out later. Yeah, they're always asking for his gun and badge. They are. <laughs> we need like a lethal weapon Star Wars movie. <laughs> Badly. It's, Have my ass the mayor will quite not. <laughs> <laughs> Wreck 20 cars you did. <laughs> but this is where uh, Anakin says, hey, there's a race tomorrow. It's the Boon to Eve race or whatever. Like I can uh, help you guys get the money and all this stuff. And Shmi's like, no, it's too dangerous. You're literally 10 years old. And like once we see the race, like holy fucking shit, why would I let you do this? But it'll be fine. <laughs> Uh, she caves pretty fast though. I do. It was actually emotional. I'm, I'm ashamed to say that it worked when he said, you're, you're always saying the problem with the universe is people don't help each other. And like, yeah. when it cuts to her, she's like, I do be saying that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and she's like, he can help you. He's literally Jesus. Yeah. Uh, I just don't like to fl flex. I don't like to. Yeah. I don't like to flex about it, but. But then Padme's angry, and I do like the dynamic that she's actually the queen, but she's not allowed to say that. <clears> so <throat> she's mad about trusting the boy, and, and frequently Qui-Gon has to be like, the queen trusts me. I, I wish you would. And she's like, plot twist, she doesn't. You know, uh, <laughs> She's really anxious about all this. Um, but he enters the ship as the entry fee and makes a deal with Watto. Uh, that changes here shortly, uh, but essentially Watto's like, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> 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 I, I love um, how they instead of shaking hands on deals they high five <laughs> he calls uh, he frequently hangs up suddenly on Obi-Wan on these transmissions which is a movie thing that I actually adopted in real life and everyone hates about me where like when I'm done talking I hang up the phone my wife hates it uh, but in this scene it's hilarious to me where like he's talking to Obi-Wan I forget about what and he goes there's, there's something, something about, about this boy. boy and puts it in his pocket and I'm like what <laughs> like, I cannot imagine a scenario where Obi-Wan doesn't call right back and go, like, what, what is it? <laughs> did, did the call drop? Yeah. I think I lost you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're saying something about the boy. <laughs> Hello there. Uh, <laughs> Hello. Aww. I love that. That's how Obi-Wan would answer phone calls. <laughs> Hello there. Um, but anyway, uh, we, he talks about his special powers with Shmi in this scene. I actually, so, so, there, so this scene specifically, like the immaculate conception thing is like wildly dumb. Like I know they had to like address the fact that like, where did he come, come from? Like we meet his mom, like who's his dad? Like I understand why they like had to address that, but the solution they came up with was like extremely stupid. I think like what he, he was just like burst through the force. Like that's dumb. Well, right? I, I think there's, that there's, mental gymnastic is how the idea of midi chlorians was conceived, which star Wars fans famously there's, love. There's also yeah. like a, a prevailing fan theory that gets, I think it gets more and more traction. I think it's, I might be canon now. I'm not hundred percent sure, but that uh, Palpatine and Sidious through their, or Palpatine and Plagueis through their experiments with like creating life through the force inadvertently created this virgins in the force, this immaculately conceived child. I've seen the virgins, um, but it just like found Shmi on the outer rim. Like how, how did she like, why was she the one to bear? Well, who's going to look into child. like, is she going to check into a hospital? They don't have hospitals mm -hmm. on Tatooine she, on the outer rim, uh, far away from the eyes of the Republic and the Jedi. I think his father is captain hook and she doesn't want to say <laughs> it's just me. Maybe. It's just me. <clears throat> this scene where 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 they're like discussing like how he's like smart and he likes to fix things and he wants to help people and you're seeing him like off in the distance like fixing his pod. 
this scene always makes me sad. Like just like watching this like little child trying to, to like do well and like knowing what he becomes and like how many people he kills and like the awful shit he brings to yeah, this it's a tragedy. later on. Like it's really, truly sad to me. Like mm-hmm. watching this, like I actually think this is the saddest scene in the movie. It's an incredible art. Because of what it, because of because of on what paper. you know later on, right, right. It's just not executed <clears throat> well. Right. There's some, yeah. There are some things that I don't like like about it, but I think ultimately at its core, it's an effective scene for me because you I hate know, sand. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's coarse and it gets everywhere. Can you imagine him on a honeymoon? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> I told you, Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> I love Anakin's dumb friends. Um, that they enter the scene and exit the scene with the same stocked the, child oh, laughter noise. I wrote that down. Yeah, it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they enter the scene and exit. And then there's like, there's the there's the one little. Hope rodent. you don't fucking die, Annie. <laughs> well, there's there's his 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 actual G Kitster. Yeah, who's, Kitster. You who's, got it this time. I the Kitster. You're gonna, the Kitster. You're gonna finish the race this time. <laughs> Oh my God. I'll, I'll, I'll save him later. later. Uh, uh, but yes, yeah, so there's Kitster who's, who's got his back. There's Wald, the little Rodian boy who's like, woo, 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 like always just kind <laughs> of so funny, bouncing Annie. up and down. <laughs> and then there's the other three kids. There's like these two girls that are like, I don't even know why we fucking hang out with you. <laughs> and then another kid who's like, you're going to fucking die. Come on, guys. Let's go play. <laughs> Let's go play both. <laughs> uh, does and that one see. girl have braces? Yeah, she does. <laughs> That's cute. Yeah. And even, the first, in, even in space, there's braces. It's hard to get on They call them spraces. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> this, is, this is the scene where Jar Jar gets his mouth cut in the energy oh, binder. God. Some one of you wanted to say something and, about that. Oh my that. God, it's so funny because if you watch the way it's, it plays out, uh, but Jar Jar's, his face is a little close to the energy binder <clears> that <throat> keeps the pods together. It's so funny. And, <laughs> and Anakin's like, yo, Jar Jar, don't put your hand in that binder. Your hand will go numb for hours. He's like, okay. And he immediately sticks his head in it. And he's like, my tongue, my tongue. And then he sticks his hand in the engine and his hand's now caught in the engine. And the way the scene plays out is Anakin's going to fucking start that engine. He knows Jar Jar's there. C-3PO and R2-D2 walk away like, (laughs) that dude's weird. (laughs) Oh, I wonder if they're going to kill him. And Padme's the only one that's like, maybe I should get his hand out of that engine. Also, this scene is so long. Like they spent so much time on this one stupid, unfunny joke. But that's because you get to the glorious climax of it's working, it's working, working! (laughs) which is worth it to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, It did work for that scene. Qui-Gon gives him a midi-chlorian test, sends it to uh, Obi-Wan, who's it's it's off the charts, over 20,000. Even Master Yoda doesn't have 20,000. No one has. What does it mean? There's something about this boy. (laughs) Uh, at this point Maul lands on Tatooine uh, and then doesn't feel like making that walk to the spaceport no he's like send my drones I don't want to waste any time looking there's like like two there's like two spaceports he can see from where he lands he's He's like like, oh shit uh, mm, send the droids yeah Mm, I've never seen a greater hive of scum and villainy (laughs) I just imagine like Maul got like a lawn chair and just like laid out with like those like foil things for like the whole day just like wow when my boy's coming back (laughs) tanning his his tips yeah tan them tips what does he do for fun in that ship Wally waits. Jerk off. Oh, <laughs> <Christ>. <laughs> the dark side is more seductive. That's true and sexy. Watto thinks Sabalba is going to win. And so he's ultimately putting all of his money on Sabalba, even though he he wins a lot of money with the first deal if if Anakin wins. Um, so he he Qui-Gon bets the pod against Anakin's freedom. There's the whole bit with the chance dice. Oh, I happen to have a chance cube. Yeah. And Qui-Gon cheats. And he's like, Meep. yeah. Meep. Oh, blue. Weird. Uh, and 3PO makes the joke about never going on a starship. And then Annie's like, oh, it's so wizard. Uh, and this is where we find out he's never even finished a race, much less one. And Padme is pissed. I, I, I love this part because uh, Kidster says, like, you're definitely going to do it this time, Annie. She goes, finish what? And he's like, and Kidster looks at her and goes, finish the race, of course. <laughs> It That's, gives her the biggest stank eye yeah. ever. Like, She's I don't jealous. know if George's like, hey, I want you to pretend that this girl uh, is a fucking idiot. <laughs> Stole the last grilled cheese. Kidster uh, acts more in this movie than half of the other actors in this moment. Yeah, he's working. 
Yeah. Uh, and then we get the iconic pod race, a very long sequence. Oh. Uh, one, the farting alien is one of those times where it's like, you're doing too much with the Jar Jar yeah. thing. Well, is it Piusa? Yeah, like, you don't need well, that. Well, like, it's cool because, like, this why, whole why scene, that? like, they are, like, introducing, like, the pods and they're their drivers and it's like colorful and strange and the, like cool the, the like, music with the flags yeah. and and like the like announce like the design of this scene it's specifically great. is so cool and then they're like hey if you forgot how funny jar jar is here's a thing farting at yeah we don't Adam. need we don't it's need like, that we don't need that no. that's real bantha poodoo to throw that in so stupid bantha poodoo uh, Sabalba sabotages his pod we see Jabba a little Jabba cameo and apparently he's got a wife which makes <laughs> His fascination for human bikinied women a little strange They're and inappropriate. Weird. Job is Polly. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> that's fair. That's Gardula the Hut. Uh, I love the job. Uh, the the Jabba. I love the pod racing scene. I think we yeah. all do, right? It's great. Yes. The sound design of Sabalba's pod. <laughs> oh <my God>. the, <laughs> the, the whole the sound design of the whole fucking scene. Every pod just, sounds a little different. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a bassy Popeye. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I love. And I know it's just a member berry. But the, the Tuscan Raiders are just camped out being That's dicks. That's so cool, yeah. Because <laughs> you know they'd be bored. Yeah, like, of course. Let's shoot course. up fucking pods today. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be great. Go, let's go shoot up And people. if they can like disable a pod, then they can just go down there and like steal it and or steal parts. Or just fuck them. Yeah. Do, do, <laughs> no, when, not literally. I mean like they yeah. don't... <laughs> When they shoot, <laughs> when they shoot Team Toe's pod and blows that up and you, cool. you know, they're like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Er, er, this, er, er. The, I, uh, uh, this scene was also fun to revisit because the whole time I just kept remembering like, oh, I know every single one of these motherfuckers names because of the pod racing the video pod game. Racing game. Yeah. Like, there's Rats Tyrell. Yeah. There's Gascano. Ben there's Mars Quo. Ben Quadraneros. Odie Mandrell. There he is. I know Quadraneros because he's Doug his, Bolt. Because like his name, he is. Four pod engines. You yeah. got it. <laughs> you got it. A little on the nose, but you but you got it. I and like then, the scene. My favorite part is where Jabba is just kind of bored, and there's these two living creatures crawling in front of him, and he's just like yeah. flicks one off <laughs> and kills it. There's there is there is like an extended part of this because it's not a bug. Scene. It's like a cat. Yeah. On you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. Anyway, there's like an extended part of this where there's no like announcer. There's no words. Like it's just like sound design oh, and the, the home stretch rules. It's so cool. Like, and like I hadn't watched this movie in like 10 plus plus years. I know how it ends, of course, but I was on the edge of my seat still. Like, I think yeah. this is the strongest action scene in the whole movie. I agree. Yeah. And also this is like, if you think back to what we know of star Wars up to this point, this is probably the freshest, most original thing that we had seen in star Wars yet, because this like they had now never done like a race, racing. like like a compet a competitive race. Of course, it's on um, a planet that we know, but mm -hmm. they like expanded the lore and the color and the yeah. design of that world so much in this one one movie. This scene was truly fresh. Yeah. And it still feels feels fresh to mm -hmm. me. Yeah, I'm with you. I love it. It's there's so many fun little bits in it. I, I love the pod racing scene yeah. so much. Um. <clears throat> There's a moment where Sabalba like throws something into the engine of a guy behind him. Yeah, it's cool. And he goes, Tomorrow's <laughs> 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 globe, maybe. The whole Anakin spinning thing. Uh, you know, uh, what's cool about this scene too, functionally, is you get to see how powerful Anakin is because as a boy, not only can a <clears throat> human not, should a human not be able to do this because their reflexes aren't quick enough, but it's like, nobody should be able to do this. You know what I mean? Like this is incredibly dangerous uh, and like, you get an early idea. And so later when he's just flying a ship, it's as silly as the movie is. It's like, sure. I yeah, mean, we've seen no, what he can do sense. in a pod. Why, why wouldn't he be able to do this? Like, sure. Right. He's just innately. He's a real Mary Sue. He, honestly. He, honestly. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all the people who bitch about raving and Mary I Sue. It's like, watching Anakin these movies again. Is just as bad. I, I yeah. can't believe they said that. Because it's like if you, everyone's like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like everybody. the whole point of the force. is right. like a propensity for dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm really good at pod racing. I'm a pilot. Especially I'm a mechanic. I'm Ray, a fighter. I'm a. Ray had been raised on this harsh planet without parents like just surviving like she can fight she's got that staff she like it's it was more believable than any of this other stuff if anything yeah um grinds my gears but yeah anakin wins woo woo I, I, the, the winning part 
there's a lot of great, funny, unintentionally hilarious moments. Like when he crosses the finish line, it pans over to Kitster and Walt celebrating, and they they're just awkward little yeah. kids. Are like high five? No, uh, yeah. yippee, <laughs> yippee. We, there's that's what part, we do. There's that part where um, Sebulba's pod like crashes, and then there's that like scene where it like oh, skids no. across, across the sand and stops. Yeah. I really want a cut where um, someone like edits him in just replacing the poodoo with fuck <laughs> Poodoo. Poodoo. and I, I, I like died. that i like that i actually like that Sabulba doesn't die like it's just because yeah like, it's cool I, yeah. it's like oh he lives to pot another get another day yeah <laughs> and then the what they finally like th- like he's celebrating all the people like pull anakin out of the pod they're lifting him on his shoulders and <laughs> shmi goes like you've done it anakin <laughs> you've given hope to those who have none mm. Mm. So he's just like, like He's just complaining the whole time. <laughs> mm. Oh my god. Mom's what kissing a, me. Mm. What a weird thing to say to someone. Yeah. Hey, you've given hope to those who have none. I say that to like a Chick-fil-A when they say my pleasure. I say that. Oh, you've given hope to those who have none? Yeah. They're like, what? Didn't Qui-Gon's right, right next to her like, fuck? I don't what? what? <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Watto tries to go back on the bet, but he's like, it's just in his nature. He doesn't try. He doesn't try very hard. Yeah. Uh, but he still yes. won a bunch of money because he wins all of the winnings minus the T14 hyperdrive. If Anakin well, wins. He also, but he, but, but he lost his life. But he bet everything else that he had on Sebulba. So I think he actually lost money because he would just bet everything on Sebulba. Yeah. But, but the way that betting works, if Sebulba's won every single race ever, like you're, you're not winning much if you win. Right. Yeah. Just uh, throw that out there. I don't know how betting works on Tatooine, but. The same. It's hardcore. <laughs> it's hardcore. Uh, but so I, uh, I d- 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 Obi-Wan sees them when they go back to the ship without Anakin. I uh, sense we've picked up another pathetic life form. Damn, um, Kenobi. <laughs> that's what he's using his force for. So Qui-Gon tells Mama uh, that he's meant to become a Jedi. And he tells Anakin, I love this scene. It's a hard life, Anakin. And Anakin should have said, oh, is it? Is it harder than maybe... Growing up on a desert planet as a slave. <laughs> is that maybe equally Read difficult or more? Here, what do you think? I, good point. <laughs> Your life's been so cushy so far, and I want you to long consider. <laughs> now, we don't put a bomb in your brain if you leave the Jedi <laughs> Temple, but I mean, it's no cakewalk. <laughs> uh, and then Anakin at the last second remembers he has a mother, and he's like, oh no, what happens to you? He says bye to 3PO. I wish I could have finished you. There's a really, th- and I don't know if they've ever done this again. Maybe you will uh, remember, Steve. But there's a really weird shot here where you're from C-3PO's point of view, like oh, watching yeah. him like move move around the room. It's such a weird shot for a star Star Wars film because, like, because like you've said, like they they don't really get like creative at all with like how they shoot shoot these scenes. This is the only instance I think in which we've seen like point of view. There's another shot in the beginning of the movie that I didn't talk about, but I, I don't like it because uh, the choreography is elsewise so impressive. Yeah. You get POV <clears throat> shot of lightsaber for a brief second. Oh, yeah. You, you when, know what I'm talking about? Yeah, and you see it, the battle droids being cut It just cut cuts half. through droids. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then true, it's true, like true. it cuts to... It's like a so a porn director was, uh, was the AD that day because <laughs> then it cuts to face of Obi-Wan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's such yeah. a weird choice yeah. but you're right that those are the only two like it's just like, like that, and like i had never really noticed it before but like as an adult now like watching it again i was like that's that's a really strange shot specifically for star like specifically for star wars i was thinking about uh avatar way of water a lot watching this the way of the water uh because I saw a clip where somebody was pointing out like why it looks so good and why it's so impressive, even though it's like 90% digital. Yeah. Um, there, it was a scene where, and I'm a huge Avatar fan, so I don't know the names of these things, but it's like the fucking, the, the blue guy and he's riding the fish guy and he's, <laughs> he's, I actually think that's what they're called. He's jumping in the air and then he goes, splashes underwater. Uh, but he, like they, they do it in such a way that if it was real, it's the way it's the where you would mount the camera is where James is the way James does stuff like it's it's uh, hanging off the side of the fish and then looking up at the protagonist. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and which is what you would do if it was like a Fast and Furious movie. You would mount it on the car and then point it that way. And that's why it, visually it <clears throat> looks so impressive to you because it's what your brain is used to. And that, so oh. George doesn't do that. No, it's no. digital. So he's like, we'll put the camera right. in the ass. It doesn't mean do anything. <laughs> yeah. um, Poetry, it rhymes. But I think it, it's just interesting to kind of like think about that when watching these movies specifically. Uh, so the drone, we got it. We got it. Bye. <laughs> just as bye. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> we got to start pod racing you later. through this. Uh, the drone snitched to Maul. Uh, the motorcycles. I had that toy. I had a Maul yeah. with that motorcycle. I so loved sick. it so much. Um, Maul's like, it, like intro to the Jedi is intense. Like he's like, he wastes no time. When he rolls up on Qui-Gon. Yeah. He yeah. tries to run over a child. And this is the first <laughs> time like down. Jedi and Sith have clashed in what? A thousand, thousand, thousand years at this point. Like the, the, it's, he doesn't even know what he is. Right. He just knows he had a lightsaber. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he had scary tips on his head. And he actually refers to him as an it. He does. He does, which is forward thinking. And then he... <laughs> 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 so he fights him. Uh, and then we get the whole bit where he like jumps on the ship. They, so they immediately opt for like running yeah. instead of trying to fight this guy. I mean, if, if Darth Maul just rode up on a motorcycle and jumped to me, I would be like, in the car, in the car, in the car. <laughs> go, 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 go. That's, that's fair. Let's go, let's go. What the fucking demons after me? And he's all sweaty when he gets up there. He's like, oh shit, I almost got got. You know, mm -hmm. you can kind of tell. Uh, and then Anakin meets Obi-Wan and it's a funny scene because he's like, nice to meet you. And then it's only helped by the fact that Liam Neeson's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's just like that. He's like, whatever. <laughs> uh, we cut I to, called you a pathetic life form a minute ago. Yeah. I still feel that way. I still feel that way. <laughs> I we, hate kids. <laughs> we cut to the Viceroy. I don't. Uh, uh, oh, uh, what's his name? What's his name? It's not Khan. Starts with a C. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Send Newts. Send Newts. That's right. Newt Gunray. Yeah, there, there he is. Go. My boy. He's there back. He's uh, back. Uh, the Newt Gunray is talking to the governor, whose name is C.O. Bibble. Colin Powell. <laughs> C.O. Bibble. Uh, and so, yeah, whatever. That scene's not important. There's, well, there is one thing about this scene that I love. Um, there's a battle droid with a extremely New York accent in this scene. He was like, we must expand the search for these rumored underwater villages. It's, it's like really weird. I'm like, why? Why did they get that guy to voice this battle droid? It was just strange. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Something's wrong with that battle droid. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Give him a little personality. Hey, I'm walking here. <laughs> <laughs> roger, roger. Uh, and then at this point, we get Anakin's little th trinket that he gives to Padme that he carved out of a Japur snippet. Mm -hmm. What's a Japur snippet? Who the fools to say? It's a snippet of a Japur. Yeah. yeah. Duh, that was, a, that was a riddle. Of the many trees from Tatooine. Uh, we finally see Coruscant, uh, which was added into the OG trilogy, right? Like a brief shot of Coruscant. Yeah, at the very end of this. Return of the Jedi, <clears throat> yep. It's an entire planet that's all one giant city. Cool As idea. Ricole says. <laughs> yeah. Make sure we all we all know. Yeah. Cool idea though. Uh they meet with Palpatine and uh Chancellor Valorum, and then Qui-Gon's like, I need to go talk to my peeps, the Jedi Council, immediately. And then Jar Jar at this point looks at Anakin is like, that's the queen. She's pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> that was, was so like, weird. <laughs> what? That, what? What does he say? What does he actually say? He calls he calls her pity hot. P-I-T-Y hot. Pity hat. Oh, I never read that. For some reason, it worked for me. I didn't read that as pretty hot. I just read it as slang. Oh, for, were you thinking like, I'm, I, she, I mean, I feel bad for her, so I'll say she's hot. I mean, she's no TC-14. <laughs> no, giving her, no. I'm giving her your pity hat. I, I didn't, of me of all people, too, I didn't read that as like a sexualizing or anything. Because then he does. I like read a, it like slang, like she's feisty or tough. And it was like Gungan way of saying that. Maybe that's the Gungan way of saying, but the way he says it to Anakin, who we know has a romantic yeah, interest in fair. her. Yeah. And also he gives that, that sly, like, it's pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> that sly yeah. Jar Jar smile. Uh, we go ahead. Oh, it's, I was just gonna say I love how they go to they go to Palpatine's apartment. Which <laughs> who would have thought that the guy who fashions his apartment and all red everything is the evil <laughs> Sith Lord? <laughs> He's just got a particular style. Yeah, that's the way I thought of it. Yeah, but he kind of tells. Padme, or uh, the Queen, I should say, about the corruption in the Senate and how Chancellor Vlorm has no real power. Yeah, he's prepping her for his real plan, which is to become a Supreme Chancellor. But she's like, nah, Vlorm's been a constant and only ally in the Senate. Terrence Stamp is And she awesome. has this weird accent out of nowhere again, yeah. all of a sudden. In the yeah. Senate, yeah. I have been delivered my lines. 
from George, who's staring at me. I'm also not going to move at all, except for my eyes. I'm extremely uncomfortable. George is behind the camera. He's got like a two bar forward. He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> also, I'll hit you with this. If you yeah. emote at all. <laughs> Uh, Qui-Gon reports the Sith Lord to the council. We see First time we've seen like this many Jedi ever. at once too. Yeah. We see fucking Yoda. That's gotta be great. Fucking Yoda. Sam fucking Jackson. And as which, we said, the pilot was bad. We were, none of us were old enough to understand, but like, I wonder what it was like as an adult being like, is that Sam Samuel fucking Jackson, Jackson? is yeah. a Jedi? Like it had to be, Hell yeah. it had to be every bit as weird as seeing, um, Fuck. Jack Black in The Mandalorian married to uh, Lizzo. <laughs> no. And the villain of the episode is uh, uh, Christopher Lloyd. I was going to say Christopher. What a wild episode that was. I was going to say Christopher Walken as the Emperor in Dune. Oh. Ah. Paul Atreides. <laughs> so much spies. <laughs> Don't look at my daughter, Paul. She's so, wrapped in tinfoil. So many dunes. <laughs> how, you, how you doing? <laughs> 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 but anyway, Qui-Gon, he's like, oh, by the way, I saw a virgin, which I just, because we never had any context for that. And I wanted Yoda so bad to be like, virgins, you say? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Yoda. Why are you always such a creep? Uh, <laughs> it's apparently like a, it's a fucking force spurt. And then he can sense or whatever. <laughs> force spurt. I don't know. Anakin, um, it's Anakin. And yeah. he's like, all right, we'll show us this boy. Yeah, this You're is talking about the prophecy. The prophecy of the one that will bring balance to the force. Is that what you're talking about? Well, I'm not saying that. Saying it, you are. <laughs> Revealed your position is. <clears throat> Being a pussy, now you are. <laughs> I actually really like that scene when Yoda's like, no, I, see what you're, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, it's, it's controversial. We might like it. Like, I wouldn't tweet this. Tweet this, I would not. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Jedi Council, too, because <clears throat> this is the most uh, eclectic group of council members we'll see in the three movies, because you got Jarl Proof and his big, giant, long neck and head just, like, weaving That's behind. He's in every <laughs> background shot. That's of, the clone of, guy, right? That's the species that makes <clears throat> the clones? No. No, no, Jarl Proof's a different species, but... <laughs> Uh, you're thinking of Kevin Owens. He's not a Kevin Owens. Come on, kid. I don't know, come on. I don't know what your all proof is, to be fair, though. I don't know his species name. But yeah, every time they go to Qu the shot of Qui-Gon talking, you see his like lanky ass head. Like, I, I actually clocked him and was like, I wonder if he could fight at all. You know, I'm, I'm sure some of them could fight at a, at a certain <clears throat> level. They're Jedi masters. Exactly. They have to be able to. And yet, yeah. Kenny. I don't know. His head's getting cut off immediately. <laughs> I know like half of these guys, by the time Attack of the Clones comes around, several of them aren't on the council anymore because they've died off screen and Yarl Proof is one of them. Yeah, because that would be awkward to see him fight. <clears throat> yeah. But they, we get to see Forehead Man uh, <clears throat> the, or the, the guy with like the eight head. Keanu Mooney. He's actually a pretty good warrior. Oh yeah, Keanu Mooney's dope. Yeah. I liked his action figure a lot. I used him a lot. Yeah, I love Keanu Mooney a lot. What was the dude with the horns? Sese Tin. There you go. Se He's cool. Sexy tits. Se sexy tits. Yeah. <laughs> sexy tits is 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 on the council. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I would put him on the council. Anytime you see him in the back when he's doing, we all know why they're on the council. <laughs> <laughs> Always two there are. <laughs> <laughs> Except in Total Recall. Um, yeah, so uh, Anakin tries to say bye to Padme, but Padme's not there. But Padme is there because Padme is the queen. It's complicated. You I'm guys sure her, get it. I'm sure her heart goes out with you. This she, is maybe like her most wooden performance of the I entire I get what they're movie. trying to do. They're trying to imply that as the queen, she feels the responsibility. So she's suppressing her emotions or something. It's too uh, much. <laughs> it's too much. Yeah. It's too much. But we, we get the scene in the Senate, which is really cool. We've never seen that before. Love um, the, I love the design of the, the it's great. Imperial Senate. And the way the that they Republic Senate. When they have the floor, they like float to the middle. It's, it's a great idea. Imagine like being on the like lowest tier, though, like always looking up <laughs> at every other pod. Like I can't I don't see have anybody. to imagine like, that, Phil. <laughs> It's been my life. No, in Starting America from the bottom. And you're still here. <laughs> yes, that's correct. <laughs> but her outfit is so slay. Can we all agree on that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, at least I'll agree upon. I mean, myself. the wardrobe in this movie. Is I good, love it. So. Yeah, I love it. Wardrobe is awesome. But she tries to do the right thing. And then Palpatine's literally in her ear like the snake in Eden. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's weird. That, it's a weird choice to do that. But he did it. Uh, and then I've, I, and then she gets an accent, a, a different one, a third one. We've a never committee. heard it. Uh, in, a, in a committee. A committee. <laughs> I call for a vote of no confidence. Nar. Nar. <laughs> She's just trying on all kinds of different accents. And, and, but there are some like, her <laughs> eyes are moist as she does this. She's very upset that they're not going to go her way. Mm -hmm. And she's um, hesitant to do what she's about to do. 
<clears throat> she's face acting against George's wishes very well. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that. But there's an interesting thing politically about this scene where, because um, Palpatine talks about how the bureaucrats have kind of ginned up these corruption charges against Valorum that probably have no weight to them, but he's perceived as a corrupt politician. Mm -hmm. But at the Everyone's same time- Everyone's saying he sent dick pics to the <laughs> Quidarians. <laughs> I, I don't think I did that, but <laughs> the Republic of Mel... Pastera does not want any more dick pics. <laughs> the Republic of Malastar is really tired of getting these dick pics constantly. <laughs> we have three eyes. We don't want to get three pictures. Um, but, but yeah, he says something. But while this whole corruption thing's going on, the Trade Federation, a corporate entity in charge of taxing, you know, business lanes, has representation in a congressional body of government, which in and of itself is a fucked up thing. Yeah, It's like Zuckerberg having like a little floaty pot over there. Yeah, it's like if like <laughs> Mitch McConnell's in the Senate, like, oh, well, the representative of Amazon, please uh, <laughs> right, stand sure. up. Yeah. Jeffrey Bezos. We're really tired of Jeffrey Bezos' dick pics. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> he calls it his blue or or pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> Qui-Gon has a history of rebellion, apparently. We get the little scene about how feisty he has been. And, and there's probably a bunch of backstory you guys know um, about like his adventures. He's um, punk. He is. He's very punk rock. Anakin is tested by the council. He passes all the tests, except for the test of, oh, you miss your mother. <laughs> what a fucking nerd. You're going to suck as a Jedi. You are proof high five the people in the background. Yeah. <laughs> I, such love, a funny I, I scene. love Mace Windu's iPad on a stick. Yeah. In, in the scene <laughs> too. What yeah. the fuck is that? Well, they didn't have those kinds of things yet. Right. It was a long time ago. Yeah, right. Uh, we get the you iconic know, Maybe if we though. got rid of the stick, this would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Fear leads to anger. Anger, anger leads, leads to hate. hate. Hate leads to suffering <laughs> it's like so, and it's good though it's good Forspert. but i love how they're telling this to a nine-year-old kid who's just kind of like uh -huh. okay but, but then the cool do you gotta get any, you have any games on that stick ipad <laughs> <laughs> the cool ellipses after the you know hate leads to suffering is i sense much fear in you because he becomes darth yeah. vader we all wait are, what we're all aware of this Dude, <laughs> that, spoilers uh, while we're watching this scene um, Spoiler. I was so distracted in the scene by just how beautiful the sunset was behind <laughs> them. I was like, or was it a sunrise? Unless, well, mm. you you fame basically don't know the difference. No. So I can't. I'm gonna say sunset. <laughs> okay, but it, but it's just so pretty up there. Like if I were him, like I'd be like, man, like there's all these Jedi, but like it's so pretty up it's here. So pretty. <laughs> He's so pretty. And then we cut to a uh, sad Amidala staring out the window and- uh, You said people gonna die? <laughs> and then, gun gets to get pasted too, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Should I care also is what he's saying. Um, Palpatine <clears throat> is nominated for Supreme Chancellor, but not voted in quite yet. But he's so uh, proud. I, I think we'll get a strong sympathy vote. I will become Chancellor. And then, I pray and you will bring sanity and compassion back to the Senate. Compassion. And I was like, oh, for sure. Committee. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do love when she's like, she's like, this is your arena, Senator. I'm going to return to mine. He he does the Willy Wonka like, oh, no, please don't yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. You'll be ah. killed. Ah. <laughs> it's safer here in my red apartment. How can no one tell that I'm the bad guy? <laughs> We should ask the committee if they agree with your departure. <laughs> committee. <laughs> and he's just mocking her for saying it that way now. <laughs> like on a podcast when somebody mispronounces something and the other two won't let it go. It's like, <laughs> committee. Like committee. they just keep whispering that to her. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Queen, Queen. Committee. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, I'm combing. I'm combing. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so then, they, <laughs> They tell Qui-Gon he's great. I love him. He's going to be awesome, except we're not going to train him. Uh, by the way, they say that he's too old, which is the same thing that they said about Luke. Too old yeah. to begin the training. Who was 10 years older. Mm -hmm. How young do you, are you supposed to be? Baby. Like, yeah, like super young. Infant? <clears throat> yeah, so that you don't have these attachments to family so that when you're taken away from your family, you're not like, I miss my mommy. So the yeah. Jedi are like actually kind of fucked up. Yo, yeah. They're like blood they're testing babies. They're groomers. Well, I don't mean it that way. <laughs> 
But it, they are kidnapping children. Yeah. Not kidnapping, but they're taking babies after blood testing them for midi chlorians, I assume. Mm-hmm. And just. Yeah. yeah. And one of the cool things about the, the prequels, I think, going back to how well the prequels are establishing the lore of Star Wars, is they do kind of, the Jedi are like, we hold them in such regard because Jedis are the good guys, right? But the system of the Jedi Order is flawed and kind of shitty when you really sit down and think about it and it leads to their own destruction. And so that's kind of like kind of the cool little world building in here. Right. Like he did bring balance to the force because, but not on the side that they were hoping. Right. Uh, Well, technically him killing Palpatine in Return of the Jedi is the fulfillment of the prophecy. Qui-Gon says he'll train him himself, which apparently there's a thing where they can't say shit about that. They're like, oh, damn loophole. Because they're like, (laughs) Padawan, you have already. Oh, no, he's ready. He's He's fine. He's He'll fine. be good. He's much to learn about the living force. Yeah. He's never even been on a, at a fish concert. <laughs> but nothing else <laughs> I can teach him. to a fish concert. Because there was a whole bit of... Yeah. There's a throwback. I love that. Uh, <laughs> uh, but then Obi-Wan says that Annie is dangerous, right? Uh, and then we get the explanation of midichlorians, yada, yada. Everybody loves that. Everybody loves the M count, baby. Uh, Padme wants Jar Jar's help. Basically, it's her plot is forming about using the Gungan army because he's like, Gungans have a grand army. Me, that's why you so no liking us, Misa thinks. Uh, (laughs) That's pretty good. Qui-Gon says that they're not allowed to use mind tricks to help Amidala, which is like a little allusion to the fact that like they're not supposed to interfere too much. You saw this man try it on so many people in this movie, both successfully and unsuccessfully. You saw him uh, tweak the roll roll of the yeah. dice. Why does he draw the line here? I actually, I hate to defend this. Sure. No, no, no please, please. It's please, literally please. just a reason to create tension in the scene and not just, it's, 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 it's only said so that we don't think, why didn't Qui-Gon just force him? Yeah, and right. it's so we can get the moment where everybody's happy and they cheer that he agrees. But uh, it actually does make sense that they couldn't morally make the king commit thousands of his people to death. It's different than asking for the a boat. Are yeah, way, like we can't make sure, him decide sure. to do this. This mm-hmm. is a lot. Sure, makes sense. Um, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> but they go to, uh, you know, the, the city's deserted. It, this whole scene's dumb as shit, though, right? They, oh, the Gungan city is deserted. Oh, God. They go are they okay? Days. I know where they are. It's like, okay. And then where they are is dumb as fuck. It's like, they're over there. <laughs> we saw went into the woods. <laughs> <laughs> It's where we go we when we left panic. The safety of our underwater town yeah. to the planet's surface in the woods, where we've known that Ooh. battle droids have passed passed through. This makes more sense. We so had to check on the weed fields. <laughs> <laughs> we loved a motorboat, by the way. Uh, so yeah, the the queen reveals herself to the Gungans. She, at first, he says, "You saw all bombad," which again, in a moment, Jar Jar. It's promoted to Bombad General. That word is confusing to me. Uh, and Padme does the big reveal as Queen Amidala and Anakin's like, what? I've been talking to the queen of a place I didn't know existed. I love his face. It's just like. <laughs> <laughs> but even Qui-Gon was. Du- I don't like that Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan were duped by this very simple subterfuge because they're, they're. Were they duped? They, yeah, or because, did they like low key like kind of know? No, because Qui-Gon like turns to Obi is how I read it. And he's like. Dan and got us. I was talking to the queen the whole time. <laughs> Dang. I was talking mad shit about her. The yeah. Whole time. Queen, <laughs> Tatooine. queen smells funny. I said all kinds of shit to Padme. Uh, but she is humble. She kneels and begs, and he likes that. You said no thinking you're better than the Gungans? We saw like maybe Lisa. being friends. Being friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's their thing. They motorboat to finalize a sentence. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, Maul's like, yes, my master. And uh, <laughs> Jar Jar is a bombad general. And As you said, in Star Wars, the, the role of general means nothing. They just hand that title yeah, out to people do. like Candy. They're like, oh, have you, are you any sort of importance to the plot? General. 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 Yeah. Panaka's a bitch. He's like, Padme, I think we're going to lose. And she's like, <laughs> whoa. Panaka is a bitch. Uh, (laughs) I don't know if you know this, Phil, but canonically, Panaka becomes a moff in the Imperial Army. Whoa, does he really? He's like the Imperial governor of the sector of Naboo and is like 
all empire. He's like all bought in when the empire comes around. After this? Like, After this, whoa. yeah. Whoa. yeah and cool. I didn't know and that's that. something I didn't realize until recently I was doing like, whatever happened to Captain Panaka? And I went <clears> to Wikipedia and was reading like the, the story of how it, it, I'm like, like, oh man, he's a C sucks. Canon or, yeah. or was that EU before? It's canon, yeah. He's just oh, doing wow. what he's told. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm just following, I'm just just following, following orders. orders. He's just following orders. <laughs> uh, and then at this point, it's like an early Order 66 vibes. City has like wiped them out. All, All of them. them. Take uh, the window XP route <laughs> and fight. <laughs> and the window, it's, yeah, it's the it's window It's like XP. the most Windows XP <laughs> desktop background battlefield that I've ever seen in my life. Oh my God, that's so funny. Yeah, we get the Gungan army. The shield idea is cool because <clears throat> uh, they're like primitive, but not, you know. Um, and meanwhile, they're stealing ships to go fight to destroy like the, the base of the droid satellite thing up there. And that's where Anakin <laughs> the hides. The control ship. He hides in a ship <clears throat> with R2. Uh, stay in that cockpit, Anakin. I like how they load from below. Oh, yeah, that is droids. cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. I like those ships a lot too. They're like super they're, cool. They're, yeah. not, they're no X wings, but they're they're really sure. cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> the, the droids activate, and Captain Tarbles is like, "Ouch, time!" Ouch time. <clears throat> they're like, <laughs> they're all kind of Jar Jar-y, you know. Yeah. They're just a silly species. I love how the battle droids are like bundled up and like so cool. That little coat it's rack. Awesome. That's, That's a great yeah. scene. <laughs> that little droid coat rack, and they all come out, and then then they like extend out, and their heads pop up. That's I think some of the back and grab the some of the coolest camera work of the movie. It looks like a propaganda like Starship Troopers scene when they're like marching. I love it. Like I said, like the art design of this movie is good. I think. Yeah, like every like piece of tech is like new to this world. The production design is phenomenal, and this scene would have been so good if Jar Jar again had an arc and he took it seriously and he wasn't just so clumsy and accidentally killing all these. He does upward in that. He does have an arc kit. He was once he was banished for being clumsy, but now his clumsiness has resulted in him being a war hero and stopping the army. Like when the droid is like <laughs> the wires are stuck to his toes and he's like, he's oh, kicking it. and he even kills a droid to Kai with one. Like, stop. Yeah. Yeah. Come, Come on, on, man. Come on. Those things were like, like Jedi fled that thing an hour ago. And now you get Jar Jar like, Beam. it's silly. It's silly. Anyway, but now we get my personal favorite part of the movie. The duel of the fates. Uh, so good uh we, he reveals his double saber for the first time oh. dude do you remember seeing that in a like a trailer for star wars yes. the, first time? The, yeah. f- the first time you ever saw darth maul's second saber ignite like i remember people in the crowd going Whoa! yeah <laughs> just losing really their cool. minds really, really six cool. to midnight man yes totally um, I had one of those, like I had the toy, the double bladed lightsaber that Darth Maul had. That a neighbor destroyed? Yeah, and one of my yeah. neighbors broke it because he was being an immature asshat. He was, he was an Obi-Wan and cut it in half. <clears throat> well, he, well, he did break it in half. He like, he was trying to like, he walked up behind somebody and tried to like go under their legs and like Goose ball them. tap, yeah. ball tag him with it. But when he did it, he, he did it in a way where it snapped the thing clear in half. And he's like, ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> Yeah, I hung out with George Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anakin accidentally takes off while he's like shorting the droid to co- shooting the droid to cuss for. Uh, by the way, when Maul's revealed, it's so funny because uh, Qui Gon's like, "We'll handle this," but then Padme's like, "We'll take the long way." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that guy looks like fucking crazy. <laughs> they all just like leave. Yeah, yeah. Like thirty people. Yeah. Like, by the way, not fucking with that. Yeah. We'll do it this way. Couldn't they just like if thirty people were shooting at him while two Jedi's fought? Yeah, he, he's yeah, toast. He dead, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's dead. He's dead. If, it could have ended that so quickly if they all just worked together. If the starfighter that Annie's in just like pivoted this way, it was like, <laughs> pew, pew, like Darth Maul would be Darth. Yeah, Maul. even if yeah. he took out a few like innocent Nubians. <laughs> yeah, he'd be Darth Maul. Worth it. Mm. Yeah, nice. Indeed, indeed. But anyway, uh, Anakin accidentally takes off, uh, and then he's on up, autopilot. He ends up in the space battle. He takes forever to get that helmet on. Like it's clearly the actor struggling, and he's like, try to override it. And, <laughs> it's a goofy cut uh and it's then, made for like a grown-ass man honestly yeah. on this watch with as many problems as this movie has it's the fucking ascension guns that i hated the most and i made that's <clears throat> such a tiny dumb nit to pick the what sorry exactly so <laughs> they get accosted by droids in the hallway the hallway's gorgeous by the way in the palace and uh and padme we don't have time for this captain oh the, oh, the grapple things so they yeah. shoot they call them that he says, pull out your ascension guns. 
which is like, okay, that's of course. And they're just like it's Batman crazy. toys. Yeah. And it, the, the scene is edited poorly. So, cause they just go, and the one oh. guy, and Captain Panaka is like, <laughs> like and Panaka like, goes fucking ham on that with well, the window first. Though, so he's yeah. like, pew, 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 just like no destroys the whole thing. Yeah, no and one's ever shot that. a blaster in Star Wars <laughs> no, like that before. No. There's it's a crazy. scene when, when they land to the top floor. I, I always remember that like Natalie Portman just. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and you know what? This is such an awful nit to pick, but when she does that and she shoots and it explodes the window, they use the wrong sound effect for the blaster she's holding. It because it they because she has her like little silver gun that goes yeah. But then the the ascension guns have a different, more standard blaster noise, and in that moment, she's using the ascension gun to blast yeah. it, and it, it goes. And oh. I don't know why it's always, it's just like the one thing like, ah, this is the one mistake they made in, a, in a, an amazing sound design movie. Maybe when it cut to the interior, she went, oh, never mind. It's not my favorite gun. And we just didn't <laughs> get true. to see yeah, that. True. Ope. Ope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, Obi-Wan <clears throat> is knocked down like uh, several floors. We also get to see, like you mentioned earlier, like the force jumping, like the, force the, jump, yeah. the incredible athletics that Jedi can perform that we've never been able to see in full, full effect. Uh, but yeah. then Maul is knocked down by uh, Qui-Gon right afterward. Fucking, I don't even want to talk about the Jar Jar stuff. He's captured after Sucks. a bunch of shenanigans, yeah. right? Um, and then so is the queen and the gang. They've won this round. <laughs> the queen and the gang. Yeah. Uh, and Anakin's ship is stuck Anakin, in the Anakin's thing. It's overheated. Anakin's spinning. That was a good trick. Let's try spinning. That's Whoa. a good trick. <laughs> and the camera work in that is like <laughs> goofy. It's so yeah. dumb. It's so bad. <laughs> That's yeah, a good trick. in there. He gets stuck in there. He's overheating. So Qui-Gon <laughs> goes down. Uh, and, and, but cut back to the queen. Kira Knightley saves Amidala by creating a distraction. But Amidala knows where all her fucking gaps are hidden. Oh my God, hidden. that's one of the yeah. a decoy. <laughs> <laughs> but she's got all these guns hidden in the chairs in there, luckily. She's like, Because <laughs> she's apparently lives like a drug dealer yeah. and just has guns hidden everywhere. Um, and then we get... Uh, the, the saddest <clears throat> thing in the world, probably. Yeah. The death of Qui Gon. No, I do I, love the the touch that Darth Maul dispatches Qui Gon by physically beam. hitting him with the hilt of his lightsaber, <laughs> yeah. like yeah. hits him in the face and then stabs him. It's great. It's cool. Yeah. And uh, like you actually see like the blade like come out of him too. Like there's that like upper. It's the first time you've seen somebody like yeah. stabby stab right. with a saber like right. that, right? Yeah. 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 Because yeah, yeah. before it's all just been like arms turning into a pile of out. clothes or oh, yeah, turning into a <laughs> actually like 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 the saber work in this movie like since uh, since their droids like you see so much like sabering through things. Things, it, like doors, droids, and yeah. and him too. Like, there's a lot of like saber shit yeah. in this movie it's that, so that you don't think about now because it's yeah, yeah. And the choreography in all the lightsaber, like specifically this duel, the Maul versus Qui Gon and Kenobi, is may I, I think it, it's not the best lightsaber fight in all of Star Wars. The second best for sure. Um, it's just incredible, especially when the when the laser shield finally opens and Obi Wan goes off on Darth and he's Maul, mad. Yes. and he's just yes. like that that cool move where he blocks front, where he blocks oh, back, blocks so front. Good. Dude, I've got that down. I agree. This is, I think, this is just for me. This is the best lightsaber fight in Star Wars. What would even be up against it? I like episode three. I like episode three's Anakin Obi Wan. I like that one a lot, more so because I think the choreography is really good, and also there's like super real long. emotion to it, yeah. and it's long and cool and. But I love it. there's emotion in this because like Obi Wan himself just saw Qui Gon. Yeah, no, you're right. Take it, and yeah. he's like, I have to destroy this guy now. Like it's yeah, it's, right. it's so. And also, I think it's because like this was the first time we had seen anything like this intense yeah. up to this point. Absolutely. Like, like, it, like, like, like it like sticks in my mind as like this was the moment where we were like, oh shit! Like saber fighting is crazy. Dope. Like think of think back of when we were reviewing A New Hope and Obi-Wan did that like me, 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 yeah. move and now he's doing front yeah. back. Like the front back? The front you gotta back? gotta go front yeah. to back. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Always go front to back <laughs> for cleanliness purposes. Uh, <laughs> Anakin accidentally saves the day, which is funny. Uh, like he's just trying to get out of there and he presses the torpedo button and then he's like, now this is pod racing and rolls out. <laughs> mm -hmm. We didn't even hit it. Wait, one of ours coming out of the hatch. The, <laughs> the hang her bay is located right next to the main fucking reactor. reactor. Yes. You what know, what? Poor you, design. You know, after this new gun ray went back, he's like, 
what was the deal with that? <laughs> <laughs> but that's like the most Star Wars thing about this move, you do is there's like always a fatal flaw built into the architecture of these massive ships. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, a, a starship work. could just like miss its parking spot and boop the reactor <laughs> know, and they're right? fucking done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, what do you think about Obi-Wan doing the force jump and cutting Maul in half with Qui-Gon's saber? Pretty awesome, right? Dope. Yeah, super I, dope. I do love that when it zooms in on Maul, like realizing he's up to something. And, mm -hmm. They think there's that fear in his face. Like, yeah. what, what are you about to do? What are you up to? You finna do something? Yeah, no way you go hop up this, this <laughs> hole. <laughs> Ain't no way you go to hop up this hole. <laughs> You're going to cut me in half. And then he watches him like, Whoa, those are some I think he's impressed, shows, right? right? Yeah, he's yeah. very impressed. That's still, ow! Uh, <laughs> like, like the face he makes, like... Uh, the uh, mall is yeah. severed in half and falls thousands of feet. Definitely <laughs> dead, right, guys? Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> definitely not. What is the whole thing that the Force saves him or something? Yeah, he's some something where his anger saved him and he That's ends bullshit. up on a trash planet and has like uh, spider legs for a whole hot minute. And I hate that. Stupid. Uh, then he gets normal legs. Oh, thank God. After the spider legs, he teams up with his brother, Savage Opress, and they. He's got a brother? Yeah, he does. And his uh, name is like a, a French perfume? Yep, Savage Opress. Mm, a new and, bottle of Savage uh, Opress. <laughs> And then they decide to take over to the crime press. syndicates and they take over the planet Mandalore for a while. And uh, and then, yeah, and then eventually he's killed by Obi-Wan again on Tatooine. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Tatooine is not a place I would go. I just spoiled years and years of, of uh, Clone Wars and Rebels episodes for you all. Good. Wasn't going to watch them. <laughs> now, this is podcasting. I do remember when uh, Darth Maul died, a lot of people were so mad. Because people were like, that was such a cool character. Yeah, it's And you true. killed him in the first movie? What? And it, I'm, I under, I get it. Like, he is so cool. <clears throat> they brought him back to life in a way that yeah. he should not be alive, yeah. period. I also think, more than that, I think... <sighs> Somehow... Controversial Maul take. Turned. Controversial <laughs> take. I think <laughs> Maul is so cool that you need to kill him. Like, get, like always leave people wanting more, right? It's, like, yeah, come sure. in late, yeah. get out early. Sure. sure. I think killing Qui-Gon was a mistake. The really? only guy with any emotive power in this story so far. Um, but if you but if you stayed alive, <clears throat> you don't have the mistakes that lead to Anakin becoming Darth Vader. I get it doesn't make any sense. I'm just saying, like character wise, and <laughs> you know what I mean. Like you, you just want more Liam Neeson. What I'm emotionally invested in wise, you took it out. Did you like seeing Liam Neeson in Obi Wan? Yes, you yeah. were. I want you that were buddy cop movie. Taken with the performance by Liam Neeson in this movie. Oh. Oh. He's got a particular set of skills when it comes to acting. <laughs> I, I really, I would rather watch three movies of just Obi Wan and, <clears throat> and Qui Gon being space cops. Yeah, it's cool. Than any of the stuff we're about to watch. Yeah, <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. Have you seen that? There's, like, there's a there's a um, YouTube channel where these, these guys that they, they deep fake Ewan McGregor and like Qui Gon's faces on them, and they're just like chilling on a couch and they watch Star Wars and they react to it, and it's always like. Oh, he's going to get you right here. And Quiet's like, I always hated when he does that. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually pretty funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds fun. Sounds <clears throat> cute. Yeah. Uh, Palpatine is cheeky when he goes up to Anakin and says, we will watch your career with great interest. <laughs> mm. Nothing bad will happen. I promise. Uh, he's now yeah. Supreme Chancellor. Uh, Obi-Wan becomes a Jedi Knight. Uh, but disagree with training Anakin, I do. Um, Qui-Gon's defiance I sense in you. Need and that? You do not. <laughs> <laughs> and like the council flips here on on the issue of of training him too, yeah, which like, was like kind of a big deal. Like oh, Qui Gon was a real one. Mm -hmm. Let's honor his memory. That's right. Then they set him on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For some reason, Boss Nass is invited to the funeral. Uh, Do you think they're all sitting there like? This smells. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> you don't watch people get cremated. That's not a thing. No, that's <laughs> weird. Yeah. And then while the cremation's happening, Yoda's like, so what do you think happened with that Sith Lord, huh? <laughs> Did we kill the master or the apprentice? And then Always it, I, two I, I do love that little what like, will camera happen to pan. Me now? I do love that camera pan when they ask that question. It's like just Palpatine in the focus. Like, yeah. Ah. And, and <laughs> if you look at that scene, um, Obi-Wan is like cloaked and like the way it's shot, it's like just his like nose and mouth. So it looks, looks a bit like, like Palpatine. Yeah, yeah. It's a really good so, shot. So like you see like 
this like emperor kind of look next to the guy. It, it like like I actually think that's a pretty good like it's on the nose, yeah, but yeah. it's a good. No, shot. it's good. It's, it's great. Good. Yeah. It's very well done. Yeah, Anakin's he's gonna get the rat tail and everything. He's gonna become a Padawan. Yeah, they give him the Obi Wan haircut, which is apparently a Padawan haircut, is yeah. what it's revealed in this moment. And then the Gungans know how to party. They, this song it's so good. I like it. You know oh. what's so <laughs> fucking why John Williams is one of the best to ever do it. So the the celebration song, the ha ah, ah, ha ah, ha, that's Palpatine's theme from Return of the Jedi, just up pitched to be merry. That yeah. ooh, ooh, ooh. Really? And then they yeah. just pitch it. Ah, ah, and yeah. it's like celebratory. And, 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 yeah, it's like fuck. He's so good. Well, that wow. well that part's not in the in the. Uh, the, no, it's in there. Sure. They're like, da, 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 yeah, da. yeah. Give me a ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> hit me with that ooh. ooh. Da, 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 da. How do you not know that? Do you not remember? <laughs> it's Palpatine's theme. Peace. <laughs> yeah, here's this ball. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know what that thing is. It's a Gungan boomer, I guess. Right? It's a b- b- no big boomer. It was too glowy. I think that's actually math. Super boomer and space math. Mm. It's at a party, so I can only assume. Yeah. Padme, don't just take half uh, <laughs> and see how you feel. I'm going to look up if, if I, it's the glow. According to Wikipedia, it's the globe of peace. Uh, it's a relic of the Naboo people. It resembled a small sphere, which glowed within an iridescent light and symbolized the years of peace that reigned on the planet. As a gesture of good faith and continued relations with the Gungan people, Padme Amidala presented the globe to Boss Nass. What? His <clears throat> name is Boss Ruger Nass? Mm. Ruger? Ruger. R-U-G-O-R. I didn't know really? that. Ruger. I want to roll that R. I kind of want to pronounce it as Roger, <clears throat> but I know that's not right. Roger Nass. <laughs> it's Roger Nass. Boss. Roger Nass. Roger Nass. <laughs> Rod- Roger, I've been, Roger. I've been a teamster for oh. 32 years. <laughs> <laughs> they call me the boss. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time for our medal ceremony. Phil, <clears throat> what are you gonna what are you gonna nominate Phantom Menace for that none of the other movies that we're gonna talk about has over it? Well, like I said before, I think um I really like the way this movie looks, uh, because it was that last grainy filmic Star Wars move movie that we got. And I think that 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 fight at the end between Obi-Wan and Maul, like combined with that look, just there's something about the way that whole scene works out and the way it looks just, I I'm going to give it the award for best fight in star Wars between best fight. Well, best lightsaber based fight. Okay. Um, because I just think it just looks so cool and it's yeah, I, it, there's, there's nothing in the prequels. I think that, that beats it for me. Mm. That's a good award. It's a good award. Steve? I am going to give this the best um, uh, orchestra or or orchestral, the best score. Yeah, because you got fucking Duel of the Fates. You've got the the droid invasion theme and then everything else in there, like like all the songs in here are like just, killer i'm and glad you feel so that much. way because yeah. i was gonna give it best score and i felt like that was like a really controversial thing to say well i think it is i don't know i just think I, good, I, you, you nerds scare me i don't know Sorry. <laughs> you ever talk about star space. wars online <laughs> why <laughs> uh now what am i gonna say what are you I mean, gonna you say, can you, can say uh, well. you can copy off one of us no that's lame uh best use of kira knightley <laughs> Wow. Wow. Out of, I mean, out of all the other films, you're definitely am right. I, am I wrong? You're not wrong. <laughs> you are not wrong. Fair enough. Now it's time to do what I've been dying to do. Let's rank these movies. Now the Ooh. ranking currently stands <clears throat> at Empire at the top. A New Hope. A New Hope at two and Return of the Jedi at, at three. three. Yeah. Uh, I would like, and you would like to put this at four, I'm assuming. I would. I'm not going to stand for that, Phil. What about you? I mean... <sighs> Logically, I should put it at four, but I know that you're going to want to put it above return. So, yeah, <laughs> for a second, I was like on the edge of my scene, like, what else is he putting it above? <laughs> I almost <laughs> wanted to put it above a new hope. Ooh, God no, damn. I'm not go that. No, no damn. I can't do, do that. Look, I can make a case for above return. If if we think about all the good things about the Phantom Menace, I think um, there's some really cool, like original shit in here that mm-hmm. that. Return just doesn't have as much of. 
But ultimately, I think because Jar Jar exists in this movie <laughs> and he's so overused in such a huge part of this movie and so much screen time is spent on just useless, stupid shit that he does. Um, I can't I can't make a good case for it being above return because there are because return had some incredibly important, interesting, good things about it that I think it and ultimately overall, I think return is a better movie in the Star Wars realm well, we've got then in the Star Wars universe what's the Star Wars what's Star Wars known for uh just name, Jedi, name Jedi, anything the Empire sure. the Force lightsabers mm -hmm. uh, starships music <clears throat> music okay this movie has the best music and the best lightsabers. We just said that. But it's also a bad movie. Yeah, it's not a good movie. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> most like in, of them in are. The, in, no, in, there are components the about this that are better. In terms of how a movie's structured, in terms of how mm -hmm. acting is, in terms of pacing of movies, how yeah. movies are edited, this is just so inferior to compared to every other one. <laughs> and I won't allow you to <laughs> pretend that it's not. <laughs> They're all a bunch of high highs cobbled together with bad acting, poor dialogue and weird structure. I do think the lows of <laughs> episode one, though, are, though, are low, lower than Ewoks and dumb plot, plot, plot holes in Return of the Jedi. I don't I don't think it's. I don't think it's as good ultimately of a movie as return is. Mm. But if you make a stronger case, I could potentially come down. <laughs> I mean, you've betrayed me. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm saying like, I'm saying that what you've palpatined me, what, what, Ooh. what you presented Ooh. is interesting, but I think, I don't know, like Steve also makes a strong case for like, it's just not a good movie. Ultimately, it's just not, but from, my from but my point is most of them aren't. <laughs> I know that you're right. You're right. Yeah. Are you physically in pain watching the other movies though? It, it, honestly, I enjoyed this so much more. I'm than, in physical pain when I watch this movie in certain sections. I of enjoyed it. this so much more than almost all three of the other ones. Oh man, because oh man, he, he does the same thing that he did to Natalie and Ewan. <clears throat> to Mark and Harrison, mm -hmm. but they're not as good as Ewan or Natalie on their best day by a mile. So it's like, it's worse for me. It's worse that he did that to Ewan and Natalie in no, this movie? Like because I but, think, I think Carrie and Mark and Harrison are way better at acting in the other movies, even with him directing them. Mark, no. Harrison does a good, like, Cutthroat. Mark's goofy, dude. He's I, goofy. I was unaware that dude could act. He's at goofy, all but he's until, not wood. Yeah, <laughs> wood. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I'm just gonna like, go to Tashi Station. The extremely <laughs> wooden performances in episode Mark acts one like he's are. in an anime dub, and Natalie acts like she's dead. Here's a here's a, here's a here's a <laughs> here's a. Uh, I don't know if this is right, but it's a theory I have about. So when we were growing up and the prequels were new, they were loathed. Like everyone yeah. fucking hated Universally, them. Universally, yeah. And they have a renaissance. They were mostly correct. But like within the last, I don't know, what would you say? Like five to 10 years, there's, yeah, there's been, been a sort resurgence. of like resurgence of people who are like, oh, I love the prequels. And I think part of that is- Young those kids grow, growing up. <laughs> young kids growing up. Yeah. It's just nostalgia. I, think, I also yeah, think right. part of it is in this day and age, people fucking love memes and meme culture. And the prequels are a hotbed of memes because they're bad. And so you can make memes about them because it's funny that they're bad. And that will make you think, oh, I love the prequels because they're funny. And I think that's true. Like you can definitely watch A Phantom Menace and laugh at a lot of this stuff because it's meme worthy and bad and funny and you can laugh at it. And I can understand how someone would feel a little like, um, it's charming mm. that it's so bad and, 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 all, and whatever. Uh, but I don't think they're good. Like th I think this is just a bad movie when you compare it to other bad movies, not even compare it to other Star Wars movies. I just, I just don't agree. There's too much other stuff to recommend <clears throat> it. Like the, like there's no, I see, I keep saying none <clears throat> of the movies are good. And I, I'm saying that to kind of 
poke you're, the bear. You're being you're being salacious, but crumb. N- none of them. <laughs> <laughs> but none of them <laughs> are bad. Bad. Like I, I, a six out of ten would be the lowest I'd rate any Star Wars movie because it's fucking fun when you mm-hmm. get a fucking yeah. lightsaber yeah. and a fucking helmet. And you mm-hmm. fucking lasers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Space battles. You almost Space can't battles. screw it up. But I like them in the same way that I like a movie like Stardust or I like a Twilight. Like, <laughs> this is fun. This yeah. is fucking fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Phil I, loves Twilight. I love Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I say that to be controversial, not at all. Like, I'm being dead ass, as the kids would say. Like, it's, it's not camp per se, but it's just like there's so much to recommend it outside of what's not working well, that mm-hmm. like, I can't deny that I enjoy this kind of thing. And I'm fully cognizant that these are movies designed for children, like designed for children. Yeah. yeah. And that's always George Lucas's point. Like the kids love it. And that's who I made it for. You can suck my balls <laughs> and I'm rich. <laughs> Billions of dollars. I'm going to leave into my money. <laughs> I will say um, the existence of Palpatine in the sequel trill. Pudgy really does take the wind out of the ending of Return of the Jedi to me. And mm-hmm. I didn't get that no. the, f- the first hundred times I watched that no. movie. No! <laughs> and I feel like, unfortunately, <laughs> because I know, like, well, that's not the end of him, like, it has less of an impact. And so I feel like Return has, like, taken a few hits for me as a result of, of that. And I will say that since I hadn't seen episode one in so long, it did feel like weirdly fresh and fun to me, even though I had seen it many times before. I think I enjoyed watching episode one this time more than I enjoyed watching return, but I think Steve's right. It's just not a good movie. Mm -hmm. So I can't, I don't think I can say it's better than I knew I was fighting uphill. (laughs) (laughs) I think that the, the, you know, empire new hope return Phantom Menace would be a ranking 97 out of 100 people would agree with, which is why it's cowardly and lame. Well, I don't think it's necessarily cowardly and lame so much as like... True. Facts is facts. (laughs) (laughs) There's no no sauce. There's no sauce. Yeah. No, like I completely understand what you're saying. I just, I don't think logically speaking, I can... Emotionally, I get it. Logically, I can't. I don't think I can go that Let's route. do it then. Let's. Well, why wait? Why wait? Let's seal it in. All this right. is number, number four. Three, Phantom Menace. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was no trickery in there. We'll put Phantom at the bottom. And I'm assuming since we're just going with uh, the uh, uh, most upvoted list on Reddit, uh, Attack of the Clones will be number five next week, most likely. We'll see. We'll most see. people. A lot of people think like, the clones think, is the worst of the trilogy by a mile. Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah. And I would say uh, that's a fair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious because as a kid, all I remember, I haven't seen this in so long, like lightsaber battles out the yin yang, uh, uh, Natalie Portman's midriff <laughs> exposed for no reason. But when you're 12, I'm in. I've sensed an awakening. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I remember. I literally had uh, the magazine cut out of her when her shirt was torn off yeah. on my wall yeah. at 12, you know? I get my it. My mom was like, huh. And I was like, Star Wars. <laughs> I, love, I really love Star Wars, mom. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so anyway, why are you watching Garden State over and over? <laughs> Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> huge crush on Natalie when I was growing up. So let's do it. It's number four. I'm excited to see where Clones falls, but let's let's wrap this all the way up and see what kind of obscene story we've crafted <laughs> with my... Uh, Deep grammatical knowledge. All right, this is the time where we craft our story of Mad Libs. You guys want to know what the title of the story you guys just crafted is? Erica, sorry, Erica just said we should solve our argument with a a dance fight to some smooth jizz. (laughs) (laughs) Let's cue it up. (laughs) Oh man, Phil's throwing ass. (laughs) I got served. (laughs) But this uh, week's episode of Mad Libs is titled Piloting a Pop. Piloting a pod racer by young Anakin nice. Skywalker. This one's going to be wizard. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I know, I'm the only human battle droid who has ever competed in a thirsty stakes pod race and won. If you ever find yourself at the blasting line at one of these competitions, here's what you need to do to make sure you come out of the race airy. 
Number one, trust your mittens. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you can't see things before they happen, like me, you can at least keep your balls open and look out for furry pilots or debris digging at you. Number two, keep steering. The key to being a Gungany pod racer pilot is knowing how to toss. Hug, Valid. Hug those red curves and don't let them intimidate you. Number three, always remember, have fun. Your pod racer might look like an annoying hunk of shield generators, but if you know how to use it, pod racing can be moist. <laughs> <laughs> and this concludes this week's episode of Mad Libs. It's, it's, honestly, <clears throat> I was spot on. That's the story as I would have told it. <laughs> I That's feel like. A tale as old as time. I hope you guys enjoyed our deep coverage of The Phantom Menace. Next week is episode two, Attack of the Clones. But later this week, you can hear Steve and I discuss movies like Moneyball, Moneyball. and Starship Troopers. The only good bug is a dead bug. Uh, that's right. Patron demanded films. Go to patreon.com slash streaming things if you want to join discussions and mandates like that. Uh, but as always, just love what you love, guys. You know, if you think if you think Phantom Menace is the best one. Live your truth, yeah. you know? Let your freak flag fly. That's right, baby. But we've got to go return some videotapes. That's all the time we've got for right now. My name is Kit. I'm Komiti. <laughs> <laughs> Steal off the bridge. <laughs> and this was Streaming Things. Happy streaming.